in honor of Calafuri. People deluded, I'm back again. Come on, Ian. <laughs>
we're going to talk about Rodri as well, of course, but there's an opportunity, whether it's in the league, but there's other trophies, other competitions that are going to be there. Man City are going to have to try and juggle that, all of that now. Then they're not going to be able to do it, I don't think, in this intensity of the league, especially when they've got that World Cup coming in the end of the season as well, that club won. Yo, opportunity is there. Now it's time for us to make history. Facts. Where are you lot saying? I think they're shook. I'll keep it 100% real. I think they're shook, man. You know what it reminds me of, yeah? It's like the kid that gets bullied in school, yeah? And then two twos, you buck him like seven years later and he's been... And he's bolo now. Yeah, he's been hitting the gym and then you realise you've got to approach, man, a bit a bit differently. That's uh, man, <laughs> Yeah, man, Carl. Right, let's keep it real, yeah? They used to send us to the top on lunch break, innit? Like, we, have to, <laughs> we, have to, we, have to, we have to keep it real, man. That's what they were... It's fact. It, it's fact. It's what they was doing, man. And now... Yeah. Do you know what I think it is, yeah? I think the thing that's rattling them the most is they're so, like, not only them, but everybody's so used to Arsenal being, like, this team that plays ball and plays the beautiful way and goes out and attacks Tiki Taka and all them things. But we're actually showing the world, yo, if you want to deal with City, bro, you just got to go negative ball. Scumbag thing. Yeah, you literally got to scumbag it. Like, you get me? You got to do Stoke City vibes. Like, I... Boy, I was watching the game, yeah, and I was like, "Raw," because there was one point, Kirio, yeah, he stepped up on the on the throw in, yeah, and he's rubbing the ball, and I'm like, "Raw, have we found out Rory the lap?" Like, you know what I mean? Like, you get me? Like, uh, uh, do you know what it is, yeah? And this is this is why I guess every season it makes it really hard for me to know do I want to continue with Arteta or not, yeah? Is he just adapts? Like, he's the only manager that I've seen in recent times that just constantly adapts and adapts and adapts. And like, evolves, really, yeah. Yeah, really, do you see us, like, do the same thing over and over again now if it doesn't work? And I also feel there's something else that's rattling them because they're like, raw, like, how many more how many more levels can this Arsenal team go to? And, like, they're looking at us now and they're probably thinking, raw, but what, what if they had a Haaland or raw, what? What if they actually had... What if a, we had 11 men on the pitch still? <laughs> what, yeah, what, what, what if we had 11 men on the pitch? Like, So, obviously, there has to be certain conversations with Trossard, yeah, because if anybody should know not to kick the ball away after <laughs> the whistle's gone, it's an Arsenal player, innit? Because we all saw what happened a few games ago. And who's the ref as well? And who's... Yeah, and who's the... And you know what, yeah? We, uh, you know, I think it was... I think it was Turkish that said it, yeah? And I'm all for this, yeah. Look when the look when the Super League thing went on, and the way that all the clubs linked up, all the fans linked up to make sure that it didn't happen. I feel like we might have to do this for the refereeing situation because it's getting a bit out of hand. City and, are not going to join us in that, bro. Yeah, City might not join us, yeah. Because obviously they they got. Do you know what's funny, yeah? How how is my man refereeing in the UAE, yeah? But nobody. Nobody questions. <laughs> How's he refing after the Kovacic blunder last year? For that, you shouldn't be around. For in me personally, because how you don't book him that, how you don't send off Kovacic last year? Fair enough. If you've done repentance and you forgive, you've been forgiven for your sins, and you've you know you're not you're not making errors anymore. Fantastic. But for me, it's the consistency, man. Like I do think us Arsenal fans, we waffle about the refs, bros. But if Trossard's booked, Doku's got to be booked, and I'm sure there's someone else. For the life of me, I can't remember. So you're bang yeah. on the money with that, man. And even like. Even Howard Webb came out, yeah, and said Michael Oliver didn't send off Kovacic because he wants it to pretty much stay a competitive. Like he wants it to be dealt he with. Didn't want to ruin the game. That was he it. Didn't want to ruin the game. What happened? You about? ruined it last week. Yeah, last <laughs> night. <bro. laughs> what happened about that game? Where, but you know, do you know what? Yeah, I feel like if we're not winning that game at that point, he doesn't get the yellow card. I agree. You know, I haven't thought about it like that, but I actually agree. I actually agree because we the momentum was turning. Like we started playing ball, we got our two goals. It felt like all right, let's just get in at half time and we can see what we could do, man. Like you see the I know you watched it, the, the Joshua fight, innit? You see the <laughs> you see the clip, yeah, when he's getting game and the Saudi the, the Saudi man's like yeah, on the <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but that's what happened, bro. Someone made that phone call, it came through the recordings, man. Like is that the way it's supposed to go? If it was football manager, they'd definitely restart hundred percent. Like but it's vexing, it is vexing, but it is. It's very interesting because I don't know. I can't remember too much, like of when Manchester City played Liverpool when the the prime clock thing was going on. Too many of the Manchester City players coming out after the game and having a lot to say. But now it's like all of them are queuing up to get onto the mic to start. Talking Real Housewives about- of Manny, man. 
That's what I'm calling it. Like, it's fully that. Bedinas, man. Bedinas. Little old Arsenal ain't won the title in 20 plus years. You lot serial winners. Pep's potential last season. Fifth P or up for grabs. I can't believe the rhetoric. And what annoys me, because we used to do it under Wenger. Our play players used to do it. Oh, they're not trying to play football. What do you mean? Like, they genuinely are coming out and suggesting we're happy with a point. We're definitely not. After being 97 minutes away from ending a winless run at their place, man. It's an idiot thing for me. Mm hmm no, this is when you know you've got them. And this is like what I wanted to say, and I've tweeted this a few times and people are rattled. This is Mikel Arteta and why I'm going to keep backing him regardless. It's not him. He is never going to be the problem at this club. It's always going to be something else, whether we can get the windows and we can maximise the windows. He's without his most creative player, right? And he still went there and set up and said, you know, we're going for it. Because that's what we did. Up until 2-1, we were actually going for the game. It wasn't a case of until the red card, that's when we changed and said, you know what, we need to sit back. We're not Liverpool. We're not going to be bitch boys. We're not going to sit there and go, yes, back us for 5-0. Like, come on now, let's be serious. We're, we're playing a serious opposition. They're acting as if they're Ipswich, that that injustice happened to them. Are they mad? You are the biggest corruption leaders, right, that I've ever seen. You've got 115 charges against you, but you want to talk about injustice. Come on now, that's like a murderer saying in prison, yeah, I've been hard done by when you've been in CCTV at least five times murdering people. Like, come on now, you've been caught. You know what injustice feels like, so maybe you're that's why you're saying it. But the reality is, all we did was go there and play football. Yes, we decided to go defensive, but isn't defending part of the game? Or are we just now going to say, yeah, no Somebody more we lacked for like years. It? Yeah, so... Look, just because you've got outsmarted, outdone at every move, you couldn't break down the great wall of Arsenal. It's not my fault. Your, uh, you know, your army couldn't do it. Haaland wanted to pick on a kid at the end of the day. Why not pick on Gabriel, man? Pick on someone your own size. Tried to go well, for Gabriel Mikel Arteta and said he lacks humility, which is a madness. Yeah, stay humble. Are you mad, bro? Are you mad? Are you? All Arteta does is glaze off City. If I'm honest yeah. about the gaffer, hundred percent, bro. No, nah, mm -hmm. bro. Like the thing is, I hope this year turns Arteta, and you know what? Screw that club. I actually am going to massively disrespect them now. I used to have respect for what they did. And I was like one of those, you know what, innocent until proven guilty. These men can't handle it. Now that there's a new boy on the block. And this is why I say, like with Liverpool, the reason why they kept it friendly was because they knew that's how they get the edge on them. They little bro them. They know. Wolf in sheep's clothing, man. With the Gabriel Magalhaes, Declan Rice, you know, Saliba. They ain't going to little bros anymore. And that's what they can't handle. You know when the little bro gets a wham and beats up the big bro? That's what's happening right now. You know, like you say, you know, they took our lunch money for a few years and we decided, uh-uh, no more. Debo's so finally getting beaten guy. up, man. We've got the battles. Yeah. The, manage the manager's now outclassing the teacher. Like, bro, it's a, re it's a revolution. They can't handle this. They don't know what... what they're, they're in awe because we disrespected them. We went to their house and said, you know what? We're here to take over. We've not got our captain. We're still going to do it. And that's what they can't handle, man. We went to their gaff and just should... You know what it is? It's like, you know when you get told, yeah, can you leave your shoes at the door? We decided to walk in the house with the shoes. And they're just like, shit, we'll Jump all over decided, the bed, you man. <laughs> Dirty dishes. We ain't washing up after ourselves. You can wash up for me, lad. We're not doing none of this. What, you want me to take you to the kitchen, fam? Now, it ain't happening. We took a dump and we left. But yes, good night to the, the day. seventh <laughs> minute, man, it's, it's annoying. Now we left it. We didn't flush. We didn't leave this, man. Disgusted. We left it. They've got their shiny new toys. They've got Harlan. What happened to Harlan, man? I thought he scored and acted brand new, man. I can't lie. That's why I'm vexed with Saliba and Gabriel. He scored against us for the first time in a while, and he's doing no, too no, much. No, he's no, a great no, footballer, a shit people. guy. People say for low blocks we need a striker. We played a low block. Where did the striker go? It took them a centre back to go and score. So what happened to this rhetoric of you know needing a striker? We showed. You know what it is. Arteta for the first time, and this is where I think they're rattled has actually outsmarted Pep and he executed right. Whereas before, he had the plan, we just couldn't execute it. Now we got executed and he bought a plan and he said, you know what? You, you think we can play one way? We'll show you four different ways of playing. And there's other things that he did in this game, right? And I don't know if you want to get into it. Get into it, man. Telling, That's why I got all three of you here to say absolute, everything, man. I'm going to say, Arteta is arguably one of the geniuses of football when it comes to management. This guy will find every little thing to get an edge. He took Jorginho, said to him, you ain't playing this game, but what I want you to do is you're my sideline coach. 
You, I want you screaming at those players everything I want to do that I'm not allowed to do because as soon as I leave this tactical area, they're going to give me a red card yeah, and take all my life away. They're going to put mm. me in prison just for entering, you know, exiting the tactical box. So I want you to do it. And, you know, those little things, right, is what why I can never go against Arteta. This guy finds every edge, every way to beat an opponent. He was co- he got Jorginho coaching them, screaming at them. I didn't realise this until I watched it again and I was like, wait a minute. Like, why is Jorginho there? Like, he has no intention of bringing him on. And he's doing his coaching badges coaching as well, him, Jordan. It's, it's brilliant. It's, he's, oh. Honestly, his brain just works Ooh. in a different capacity. You know, you know yeah, the thing yeah. is, even Pep Guardiola spoke about it at the end of the game. He said Arsenal are the best in the world at the quick restarts, whether it's a throw-in, whether it's a free kick, how they react so quickly, which we saw for our first goal. He said they are the best, and we are, because that we don't we don't let – we go with no stone unturned in every game, every situation, how we can play, we can defend, we try and play it out the back with City's man-to-man press, we can go long, we've got the perfect goalkeeper in David Raya who can do all of that and we really are seeing where he's coming from now and DG, I'm glad that I'm back on here because there was a tough time where I see Gunalina. He's apologising. Big yeah. up to him. Don't take in Gunalee, man. He, pause. He, he, he rubbed out <laughs> Declan Rice. I mean, Martinelli <laughs> with 0017. I can't... I asked Lee to be on the platform as well. Martinelli gets an assist. Oh, He's gone pick. running. He's gone running. He's done a I run, though, bro. It. Wanted but posters see, are needed, man. You see that taking, making sure we are the best we can possibly be in every edge. And this is it. We, we went into this game. I know they didn't have their main creator in Kevin De Bruyne. We, we had no Martin Erdegaard. We are, we are physical and we absolutely outdone them physically. Look at that first look, 30 seconds. Exactly. First 30 seconds. He meant that. Of course he did. That's a message that he sent to Rodri. He heard Rodri talking about mentality about draw last season. He meant that. Kai Havertz, one underrated thing when we picked this up from the Newcastle away game and leading on to the Newcastle away game, this is why City have played it into our hands. The one thing you don't want us to ask them to feel is a sense of injustice because this is what we've thrived off of. It, all history of our club. You DG, Souls, Hooks, you know about the history of this club and when we feel like we suffer injustice, whether it's race or whether it's something to do with us, George Graham, Austin Wenger, and we're the People's Club. And look at how we've risen and gone from that. And even just look at this team, how they responded from Newcastle away last season to that one. And the thing what I wanted to say is is we are here for them and how we can physically dominate this team. They felt us and linking it back to the Dubois AJ fight. Look at the difference Poor between AJ, Dubois. Man. I know exactly to when Dubois hit AJ and how AJ was rocked to when AJ hit Dubois and Dubois. I'm fine. Just pause. Pause. that's how we felt when we felt we felt their power. Pause on that. We felt that. We felt everything they threw at us and they, it still wasn't enough to get the win. Now when we come back, and I know, again, the injuries will come left, right and centre and we don't know who might be out for that game. Hopefully, we'll have the best dual monster in Europe coming back into that midfield in Mikel Marino going into that game. Added in, maybe Erdegaard's there. And if, if we do pick up a few injuries elsewhere, as long as we've got our main key players in there, and the likes of Saliba, the likes of Saka. And even then, I still feel like this Arsenal team are in a much better position to cope with that than we have been previously. He hooked Saka, Saka, Saka. He hooked Saka at half-time as well, which shocked me because I yeah. thought he would sacrifice Martinelli. I think Martinelli is someone that puts in the hard graft, but Saka was the captain. That took me by surprise from the gaffer. I can't lie. Not that he had much to do, but yeah. yeah. I think he's thinking think long-term. Because that. he's played him as a wing-back before. So he wanted to, it, it was quite evident he wanted to go five back, you know, from the very get go and not make the same mistake that we did against Spurs, where we kind of had to let the game delay itself before we bought Califiori on. Or, yeah, it was Califiori at that point that we bought on. So it is smart because he's already kind of nurtured Martinelli to do that. Whereas with Saka, yeah, granted, he started off as a left back for us, but his best asset is moving forward. But in this game, we were 2 1 up. There was no need for us to keep a creative outlet, just someone to transition because. The clear evidence was that we just wanted to hold the ball, defend, and let them abs- like absorb the pressure, basically. So it it does make sense to some. Was it Mayweather? Like Their defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. with Martinelli, I think we're better defensively. Yeah, and I think Saka, mm-hmm. like think about it, like for Saka coming from that sort of knock that he had in the Premier League game, I think it was against Brighton when he came off um, playing in the Champions League. I think for Martinelli's confidence coming from an assist, not hooking him. 
was probably the smart thing to do for his confidence and getting him to just keep working hard because that's his best asset at the moment. He works hard. He's trying to make something happen. And thankfully, Califiori did an absolute superb finish. Goal of the season contender for us already. Start, yeah, that's the start of something for Martinelli. Keep him on, get him his defensive minutes, get him his those defensive numbers and say to him, look, you had a brilliant performance. And I think that's probably where the angle was coming from more than keeping Saka on because that might have not been beneficial for his like sort of legs and doing all that running, doing all that hard graft when we need Saka for other games. I think it, I don't know, I think it was more of a of a, of a a tactical slash mind game thing because if you, so you take off Saka here, yeah? so now Pep goes, Martinelli's on, damn, I need to keep Carl Walker on the pitch because it's slightly Martinelli. good point, slightly. Martinelli's always going to be that outlet for for you get me so it it kind of made it so and he already Pep did that as well to age your point yeah. yeah you're right so it means that Pep couldn't take off Carl Walker and bring on Rico Lewis to play in a def- different way and maybe hold the ball more in the central areas because if you do that Martinelli's blowing Rico Lewis like Martinelli's That's blowing good. anyone He's else gone. at right Very back hooks. and so probably Ar- Arteta is just thinking you know what. I'm actually super confident in the fact that if we take off Saka and bring on Ben White and then we go into a back five, yo, we're, 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 we're used to this defensive thing, innit? So let's just, you get me, hold for, make them think that whenever we do get the ball, we're going to be spraying it out to the left wing, which which also puts Manchester City in a state of overthinking that side of the pitch. So naturally they're going to want to be on that side of the pitch more so most of the time anyway. And it kind of allows Arteta to kind of control the game at a deeper level while being ten men. So that's a good point. You know I mean? This is this is what I this is why I think he did it in it. But commenting on the like the, the the smart things that Arteta does, yeah. And I don't know if anyone else picked up on it. And I'm thinking that it's Arteta that that said, "Yo, make sure this happens." Yeah. But remember when? So Miles Lewis Skelly, yeah, he got yellow card for telling Raya to go down in it. But when Raya went down, yeah, we kicked the ball, yeah, all the way over to the other side so he could go down and it went off for a throw-in, yeah. Now, Man City, yeah, obviously learning from us, tried to do the quick throw-on thing, but literally as soon as the ball went out, the physio breezed <laughs> onto the pitch, breezed onto so the pitch. So now you can't play on, yeah. So now you can't, so regardless of if you take your, like, do you know what I mean? So Arteta's probably gone, ah, you know what? You may have to hold a red card, bro, but <laughs> you running onto the pitch, yeah, it allows us to stall the game more. Do you know what I mean? And it's it's it's, it's making point. Think that like to what level does does this guy think about the small margins in a game? Bro. Like, cause that's crazy. Cause usually you wait for the ref to be like, Oh yeah, yeah, cool, you can come on. But man's gone, nah, bundle that. <laughs> get on the pitch immediately. <laughs> get on the pitch immediately. Mm. Because I don't think that, especially the way the ref was behaving, I don't think that he would have stopped the game if they did a quick attack from even with Raya being on the ground. He would have been like, oh, do you know what I mean? Like, so I saw that Old Trafford with De Gea when Smith Rowe scored many years ago. So you're right, man. We could have got zanked. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it, this is what I'm saying, yeah. It, it makes it so Don't forget he's done this before. Okay. Remember when he threw party and he said, why the hell are you off the pitch? Get your injury on that pitch that they stopped the game. Mm-hmm. That, that was... That that there though was a uh, no no no, but it's smart though because what was... we need to do is slow the game down. Like, what is part you doing coming off the pitch? You know, Arteta's your manager. He's gonna he doesn't care even if your leg shatters it from you limp onto that pitch and then you fall down and then we'll deal with you. But that's the mentality he's built from this yeah. team and making this in that culture. That was a different team as well. So so it was a different atmosphere, a different culture. That was those those my margins weren't taken into effect as much back then. But look at Arteta. Remember Mandem at the beginning of the season in the summer, everyone making laugh and joke about Arteta bringing in the pickpocketers. And people thinking, what's he doing? He's a madman. He, he, he is a madman. He is. He, he, there, there's a thin line between being mad and a genius. He's he's skits, and he's man. Both exactly he's skits bro. DG spot on because Einstein was a madman, but look at what he was able to do. You know what I mean? So listen, this is what Arteta does in every way. He tries to get a draw at that edge. And this is why you have so much confidence and belief in him as an Arsenal fan and what you see from the players and the players that he brings in and the players that he trusts. 
like we're going to talk a probably as well. We're 25 minutes in. We've not even spoken about the Go 11. on, go on, go on. This is why you're not here, man. I want to hear everything the man have got to say, but I'm tired of waffling about Arsenal. I'm, I'm here to listen, bro. Look at the lineup. We found out later on, of course, it is due to an injury with Ben White. But how many of you and how many of you watching felt worried when seeing Timber come in um, at right back and Calafiori? Not at all. This is where I, I actually was. I wanted this. I so actually I, wanted that to happen because I think Timber and Calafiori are better one v one than in that in those games in that than defensively. Wait, were you actually and then happy White. with Calafiori though? Because I thought Savino had him in a the first half. Absolutely, definitely. And but with what Calafiori also gives you is kind of that we need that balance from the left side. We lacked it. I know Timber's played really well, did well at Spurs, but kind of in possession, we weren't able to have that balance out wide out on the left. That's an issue we've we had. had Timber and Burton on his natural side as well. Exactly yeah. from last season, you're able to really mix it up a bit. And DG, that goes to another point is that you can actually invert from both sides. You give them even more unpredictability. Calafuri inverts, Timber inverts. Ben White does do it, but he's not. He doesn't do it to the same effect that Timber and Calafuri. I love them, but he's a bit basic at it compared he to them. Is, like, they do a job. He's just basic at it. And Arteta recognised that because remember when we was calling for Arteta, why don't you just invert Ben White instead of doing Kivior with it at that side? Arteta saw Kivior, says, you've got the technical attributes to do it better than Ben White, but he just didn't have the, the mental ones. He wasn't sure. as confident or assuring himself and even showing. And that's the problem with Kivior. But with Calafiori, the personality that he's got, You've seen it within the Euros with Italy. You've seen it in his early days at Arsenal. He doesn't care. One of his first actions was to go up to Emi Martinez and rattle him at Villa Park. He's not afraid of no one. Right. And and there and that's one of the best performing teams in the league right now. And we can say that now with hindsight after that game. So listen, like this is what I'm loving from this Arsenal team and why I've got so much belief in what we've got to do. No other guard, no, 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 no Tommy Asu, who would have been a great asset at that game once upon, once upon a time. And, and, and we've got players half fit coming off of the back of three away games, away from Italy with that little disadvantage of playing on Thursday. Realistically, well. three of our fullbacks aren't fully fit. You know, Timbers played, what, three times now in seven days. Calafuri's had a knock as well, not really had many minutes. We all found out just before the game, Benjamin White's carrying something. Arteta actually said after the game, ideally I wouldn't have brought him in. So that speaks volumes to the defensive depth as well, man, if I'm honest. Exactly. And that mentality, because he'll run for a brick wall. That's what he said. And that's what, yeah. and you know what, when it comes to these players and I want to speak to anyone that's maybe watching this right now as well. If you, when you feel down and negative about a result or something, trust me, back these players with the way that they, they represented this team in this shirt. Yes, they get paid a lot of money. Yes, they do well, but bro, that meant that, that what they showed out there is working until your legs can't fall, until your legs fall off. That's, that's the own, that's the, what we want as fans. And they give us that with the quality, with the passion. That, that's what we was crying for. DG, you that's you've been doing the thing for years now on here, and, and and that's what you was talking about ever since I was watching you from young man. He's seen that you we we don't we don't have that pride in the Arsenal shirt. I know yeah. these are the basics. Are people are ready to die. It's a Spartan thing, if I'm honest with you. We're like Vikings yeah. now. Exactly. And now we can go away to the best team in the world, and I think the best team in the Premier League scene, and do that. And not fear I can't them. Say and that invincible them. Team. I, I can't. I can't follow you on that. I'll, I'll give you until that. Come on, man. I can't follow you, blood. You know this thing, bro. But okay. you know what? Yeah. Speaking on that, yeah. I actually realized something. That, yeah. When they scored, yeah, I realized something. Yeah. The 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 way that I used to feel about Arsenal, yeah, when early Wenger days, yeah, bro, it's come back. It's actually come back. Uh, when let me tell you, when that goal went in. The, the pain and hurt that I felt yeah at that moment, not for myself, but for them, like for for them, the, like the hurt, I felt so bad. It's like that meme, call the police, but not for me, oh, like yeah, bro, I felt so bad for them because literally they left blood, sweat, and tears on 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 the pitch. Like these men were running so much and putting so much graft in, yeah. These men were coughing up dust from their lungs. There was no more air there left, bro. Like right. so. And I, if I just think back here to like, even like as early as like when when Arteta first came in, but when we lose games, I'd just be like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, we just we, we go next week. Yeah, we just go next week, and uh, there'll be something else in my life that 
like is is going nang. So I'm just like, oh, it's cool, whatever. This <laughs> next game will win something. Facts. To, to yesterday, bro, I felt like I felt mad. Even still now, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm looking at all these posts and I'm looking at people talking about the game, and I'm just like, but I just feel bad. And to me, that shows evidence, yeah, of what Arteta was saying when he was like. Yeah, I need to bring back the connection between non-negotiables and all that. Yes, and the fans and all of them. And and now I can see, oh, okay, he's clearly succeeded because I'm I'm not the only one that that feels this way. But because I feel this way, I know there's other people that feel this way, innit? So it's a and this is why whenever people I get asked this question a lot, yeah. Are you are tetter out? Yeah. It's why it makes it really hard for me to answer this question because. Yeah, there's reasons why maybe someone else is better, in it? Let us know, man. Let us know. Let us know. Let us know, man. Like, let us let us know because you, you touched on it. This is actually a good a good side topic. But so I so look, yeah. I, for for me, yeah, I'm at a place now where I can't think of any reason why we shouldn't be winning a major trophy. Mm-hmm. Like That's fair. I'm I'm not of the camp that yeah, Pep is just Pep and just going to win the league by default because he's pepping it. Like, I feel like we have a strong enough 20 to 22 man. We've got a fucking that. good team. We can't sit here and, and, and be around the bush anymore. We've got a good team. We play... Two points yeah. away from winning the league last year. We ex- exact, And this is the thing, yeah. We was one win away from winning the league. Like, that... Okay, so... Obviously, there's a, there's the caveat of if we win that extra game, does that push Man City on to win a game that maybe they drew in it? So, but that can go on That's forever. True. Innit? But literally, we was one win away. Yeah, so I know that we're close. I like when I'm looking at the other man. What Liverpool was like? What eight, ten points behind us? They was mm-hmm. firm. They were with <laughs> like, us for a second, and they just yeah went. Ooh, like everyone, like, like so to me, yeah, it's literally just us and City. So. If, if like if, if it comes to the end of the season and and God for God forbid, yeah, I'm don't really want to put that energy out there, yeah. But we we're, we're all sitting here and and we're like raw, our hands are we're all of a twisting, like and after more so, yeah. Like then, unfortunately, like the last two years, man. If I'm on this, like then it's like what 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 excuses can can we make? I don't even like making excuses, but sometimes there's just reasons why certain things didn't happen in it but so then i have to look at the manager because i can't look at the players because when i'm watching you you're playing cold mm-hmm. like you're playing nang like not even from but, like but a, where does that mentality come from though the guy from he said he said yeah obviously yeah I, i'm i see this is and this is why it's a conundrum for me because all of the all of the things that get us can to i throw a curveball where... though folks because i want to know your opinion on this because this is how i feel for me, the biggest problem at this club is Edu at the moment. And I'm not saying that our transfers have necessarily been bad or unsuccessful, but I don't feel like we've maximised enough of the windows. Now, there have been some great windows and there have been some good windows, but I feel like now is where Edu's under scrutiny, for me. Because this this summer window, regard, I don't know, look, we'll find out whose fault it is, like why certain players weren't signed, like why didn't Sesco come, why didn't we go for your chorus, why didn't we, why did we waste so much time maybe talking to the Williams camp when his heart set on Barcelona, you know, even previously, like Eddie with the Vlahovic situation, for me, Edu's under more scrutiny because if I'm looking at, you know, the points that you've just made, Hux, is that he's bleeding this team dry. Like, of every ounce that he can, he is maximising every player's ability to try and win. Now, yes, that's not always going to happen, but when I look at it and go, did we did we get every? I know you're not going to get every single, you know, but did we even get eighty percent of our Plan A signings? And I'd say this squad is a majority of pivot signings. They're not his Plan A's. They weren't his first choices. You, you know, mean even from like window or in general? No, no, just in general. Like if you look at this squad in in totality, I'd say about eighty percent of this squad, or even ninety percent of this squad, were pivot signings. As in, he had to then he couldn't get his main signing, so he had to go um... and get another one. And that's I'm not so, how I feel about it, but that's the curveball I wanted to throw in. I'm not so sure on that. I'm not so... All right, all right, so, all right, cool. Let me deal with the first point, yeah? So, from about two two years ago, yeah? Oh, oh damn. Go on, go on. He'll be back. He'll be back. He'll be back. He'll be back. I'm about, I'm 
about Edu, two Edu years. done off the internet. You want to hear yeah, it? Man. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. But from about two years ago, yeah, I've been on this Ed user side man thing, innit? Like, he have, to, he have to leave the club car. Car for me, yeah, for me, yeah, when you're Brazilian, yeah, you've worked. I like the, where this is going to go, you know. Go you've on. You've worked for the Brazilian FA, yeah. And, uh, okay, uh, you're not the you're not the biggest Brazilian, but you got you got the invincible on your, that's part of your name, you know, like, you can go, you can roll up to man and be like, yeah, man was an invincible, you know. So obviously you got clout in the game, yeah. Why is it that man's only seen Marquinhos? But this is where I love where it was going. Because for me, oh. I know side is going wrong, but I wish if someone has an answer, let me know, man. Because I don't know how you've gone Brazil and not found nothing. I, I've asked for me, it's almost like I want an impossible job from Edu. I haven't seen you pull a rabbit out your hat personally yet. What what I mean more I'd why say okay fair play about? because that was a yeah, but that was a scout. A scout suggested that Eddie, oh, yeah, yeah, fair yeah, enough, yeah. you dotted eyes across teams, but was his yeah. was it Kaihejio? I can't pronounce his name. He yeah, was saying yo, Sam Martinelli, right, yeah. bro. Like oh fair enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fair and enough. oh sorry, yeah. So but Martinelli, but I mean let's let's be let's let's keep it one hundred, yeah. He's he's not the Brazilian <laughs> that I'm talking about when I say Brazilian, bro. Like Oh, you mean like a Ronaldinho region? Uh, yeah, because yeah, Skillers, yeah, man, the Skillers, the Skillers, the Skillers. Yeah, skillers. Um, you get a couple like of Salvinio, you, you yesterday, you know, if I'm honest. Is, why, didn't, why didn't we go for Salvinio? Like, to be know, fair, I think he's part of that Buki City group. Yeah, 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 yeah. But how come we didn't scout him? Like, how did Edu miss him? Like, because I know he's part of that City group thing, but you know, that I get what you're saying, folks. Like, you want like a Salvinio, someone like represents that core business. Because if we ain't got bread, you need to make these kind of things happen. Allegedly it's not even. Violent. It's it's not even that I won it, bro. You're Brazilian. How have you not gone and got it yet, bro? Like, if I didn't have a Brazilian sporting direct, I wouldn't be asking questions about all these Brazilian man. But you're Brazilian, bro. How how do you not? You worked in for the Brazilian FA. How do you the national team? How do you not have? You should have people in that phone book that you can do a thing, man. You don't even necessarily have to be the guy who walks and sees the next the next fucking Brazilian done. Just talk to the right people. I, just, I agree with that point. Somebody, bro. Like, just, just one. That's all I want. Just We can start with just one. Actually, no. Right. Sorry, the, boat, the boat's too far out now, isn't it? Because I, I <laughs> want us to link up outside the stadium and, and start with the Eddie out, bro. I can't even lie, bro. Like, like, when it was a Super League thing and all the helicopters were there and we were spraying off the... I want that, bro, because it's, it's too far now, yeah? But, <laughs> but even though he's the biggest side man, yeah... I, I don't know, maybe this is an assumption and maybe I'm way off, but this is what I feel like is happening, yeah? Is, and why I kind of part disagree with what you said about the squad being a lot of plan B, yeah? Is if you think about it, virtually everybody that Arteta has wanted, or at least we know that he's wanted, is pretty much now in the squad. Like, we... No, no, he's he wanted, wanted them, but he it was his second option to those signings, though. No, no, but think about like, it. I know he, he was... wants Trussell, but he wanted Mudrick. I know he wanted no, no, but, think, party, no, think about but he wanted Jorginho first. But, but think about it, he originally wanted Riot, yeah, and then yeah. we went around the houses getting these idiots, and now he's got back, and now he's got Riot, yeah. <laughs> we, he he originally, he, I think the first ever signing he actually wanted at Arsenal was Jorginho. He yeah, has, but you didn't get. He but he has Jorginho now. Jorginho. No, no, no but that's what I'm saying. That's why it's hard for me to blame Arteta because that same cycle could be happening now where he actually wanted someone, but he's going to get no, 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 but, later. But if we look at this window, he wanted Calafiori. Like, it was actually him. He wanted Calafiori. He wanted Marino. Like, you know what I mean? He wanted Sesco. And I think the only reason we're all sitting here, like, because I'll be real, yeah. I I'm, I was, bring me your caress, bro. Like, I've been... And he's, he's even scoring more goals. Probably scored a goal by the time this stream finishes. Bro, I would have. I, I would have said all of the transfers that we got this window, send them away if it brings me your caress, innit? That's that's the levels that I'm on in it, but he wanted Sesco, and I think because he wanted Sesco, yeah, they, it's it's I feel like it's uh, maybe Edu's going to him. What about this guy? And he's like, Nah, man, I but I wanted him in it. So that's why I can't fully blame my man. Do you know what it's like? Yeah, it's like I, I don't know. I, I I don't know if man eat McDonald's in it. I don't eat on the regs in it. Yeah, but if someone's ordering McDonald's, yeah. And they ask me what I want, and I'm like, yo, my order's the same all the time. I want I want the chicken nuggets, in it. But if man turn around to me and say, Oh, they're sold out, do you want 
Do you want the Big Mac? No, nah, I don't want the Big Mac, you know. Mm. So, you, see, you, you put it like told, that, yeah. So, I, I, I hear it, but this is what he, I feel like Arteta is a very, um, I feel like because he's so much about the detail, it's making him very stubborn. And that stubbornness is, is what holds, is very similar then, to then, then we need a Don to come in that goes, you know what, Arteta, you tell me who you want, I'll make it happen. We need a mafia boss. I'm telling you, I think Edu's too nice. He's no, way too because we've heard it though. He prioritizes these relationships with clubs. I hear it, I get it. You want relationships and that, but we I just want a gun man. I want them to go in there with a gun mafia style and goes, Look, I've got a gun or I've got money. <laughs> Silver or lead like Pablo Escobar still. Uh, I'll be real. What we actually need and 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 the man, I saw your intro. Yeah, I see I see big unks bigging you up. Yeah, so maybe you got the connections, yeah. Oh, but you just have to get me into a room with Arteta, bro. And you get me, we'll have a conversation. And I, I guarantee you after that conversation, yeah, oh, all, the, all, the, all the rubbish is done. Yeah. No, no, bro, we'll, we'll you you check your pockets days, before bro. you leave the room though, yeah. Because you never know oh. when it <laughs> and, and so and then and again so, so uh, another another layer to the conundrum yeah of Arteta yeah oh, I'm loving this side note but carry on with so I'm so my background like my working but I'm a coach in it but like in a different field in it so I've been a co coach in the in the technology field in it so I understand like things about like maturing a team and helping a team develop to become high performing and all the little things that you need to do to get the team to bond, to work better. To, I understand all of that, innit? So when men are suing him for, for the light bulb, I'm like... It's oh, actually a good idea. And the Anfield it. stereo thing on the training pitch. Mm -hmm. and it, it, all these little things, people don't realise, oh yeah, it's fun patrol, innit? But people don't realise, yeah, that those things actually help a team, innit? Like, even the pickpocket thing, yeah? So, cool. If Arteta had a few man from ends that was in his team, that then maybe it would have gone a bit different in it. <laughs> man or two to the dope, yeah. But effectively, what one realized and said, "Get me Calafiore and Mikel Marino. We need some dons in it because like, these men are too what, soft." What he's effectively doing, yeah, right. is he, he knows he has a lot of young players in the squad that maybe because of the fact that they're now, like, they're young and they're footballers, so they're earning a lot of money, like, responsibility, like, they may not understand it, innit? They might so, be a bit naive to that, like, yeah, outside their bubble. So he's showing them something outside of the realm of football that can help them understand something inside of football. So uh, he's a... Getting like, them to think for themselves, which is an underrated aspect, as you said, with the managing teams things, because if you always have to tell someone something... They're not really going to get in it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so, yeah, so, so uh, essentially, this is why it's very hard for me in it. But we'll see. We'll see what I've gone. This see, I don't shoot me down, guys. But I said we're winning the quarter. Listen, I told you, my director's going to come, you know. He's going to give you an option. We're going to get on that for sure. We'll get, we'll get on that. I just wanted to say on the transfer point of view. I'm and definitely I'm, making a note of that. I wanted to say this on the transfer point of view. I get, I hear all your thoughts, and I agree with, I agree with a, a lot of them. But when it comes to the club, and no, it, when it comes to it, we don't know as much as we always let uh, led on in football, especially when it comes to transfers and signings. And I've, I got, I know, I got someone, I got a relationship with someone who's an agent in the game. He's not like a, a massive level, but he's just lower level, and just finding out the the amount of failed transfers that happen and reasons and why they break down and why a transfer can break down for so many reasons is is ridiculous so and knowing this what we know about the club is how meticulous they are in getting the right players not just the players but the right people in the club as well um and maybe that is to the detriment of our team at times hence why so many people are talking about Osiman and People, and it might be that the club are oh, that's a point not signing to, Osman. To so, on, yeah, Osman. yeah, so on the Osman one, Edu wanted Osman, Arteta vetoed it. They, 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 yeah, they, it's they, dead. They, How many times has the man been fit or scored 20 goals? And I rate Osman, oh. I'll be happy if we signed him, but yeah, it would have been it would have been oh. an idiot thing before you even get into money and all of that. And, and then and then you're talking about the, the attitude and those things, and that's the whole thing with I meet him with Tony and he said, forget Rem that allegedly. Exactly. So there's so many yeah, little so, reasons. Yeah, so that's it was why the actual the, it was the Brentford game that changed our opinion to the border on board to getting Ivan Tony and looking to buy him. But then an altercation happened between them and the board, and after that they've all turned on and said no. 
So this is not. what I'm trying to say is we don't know a lot of these things. So again, what I have to or what I have to look at is what we have on the pitch and what we, we do miss and how are we able to extrapolate that. And Hooks, as you talked about in terms of the coaching aspect, I spot, spot on, totally agree in terms of getting the high performance and the little details. But what Arteta is able to do is able to get the best out of this group. And the group is always more important than the individuals that you have in there. Because they also the individuals, say if we do get someone in, they have to adapt. They have to they have to bet time to bed into the team. Um, Pep's taken that little, um, that, that approach to things as well in the last couple of seasons. Pep's not had a great transfer market in the past two years as well, by the way. But they've No one says anything about that Nunes done. Nunes, Doku, they spent a lot of money on, and there's not a lot of output in terms of that there. Jack Grealish, even, and they were still able to Calvin Phillips. There's plenty. Sergio Gomez, there's plenty yeah, to Gomez. reel off, and yeah, they're still the able radar. to reel and get the results out of it. So that's where I hear with hooks like we there's no reason for us to not be successful. And that's why, Souls, I can't put all the blame on Edu as well, because there is so many different factors. And are we a high performing team? Yes. Edu stuck with Arteta. Edu was the one who said, get Arteta in, I thought, as far as we're aware, because he actually wanted Arteta before we got Unai Emery. And that's when Raul said, yeah, 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 that is, that is a point. That is a Raul point. Said, uh, then, so, then, so a lot of the decisions that are being made have been good. Yes, so how been about this, right? One... We get someone with Edu, because I do think when it comes to high-profile signings... Dead, man. Like, right. If Edu needs his handheld, dead, that man. You need no. to do and some then, other job. And then man. what I will say to you then, Souls, is you've got a Chelsea situation when you've got too many cooks in the kitchen and too many people. Do you, you remember when Sven Mislin tap was here and the, yeah, exactly. issues that the, the club was caused then because there was too no, many... No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm saying his mentality put in the right way. Like, maybe Ed is just in the wrong job if it's based you know, on this thing. Or, or someone needs to roughen up. Maybe we need to get, you know, like a pickpocket situation. Maybe man needs to get kidnapped <laughs> and see the dark side of yeah, the world. Uh, Souls, build a bit of hatred. You keep him, talking about it. You keep bringing up the pickpocket team. Uh, have you got something to do with that? <laughs> yeah, exactly, maybe, man. bro. He hired me and I was the mastermind behind it. Now. But, nah, but, no, no, but, but you it, know what it is with Eddie, man? I feel like he's too nice, man. He get, we get taken advantage of that. When we come to the big signings, we're like the last at the door at the minute. Like, I don't, yes, I don't, think, right so. don't you think that's oh, harsh on Edu based on the outgoings this summer, though? Yeah, remember, do you remember that? Being Devil Do you remember the outcry from the fan base from about the Eddie and Ketia situation? Where, oh, exactly. I didn't go to Marseille, didn't go to Marseille. Look what it's done to us. And we had to, he wants 30 million, never going to get that. Emil Smith Rowe, what oh, get, we need to get him for lower. Now, why do we sell Smith Rowe, man? I don't care. Nope. That is the Again. worst. I, that goes against Edu. I don't even care. I know, but. But what, we, all will be all will be proven again in at the end of the season. That's again, no, no, and we even can win then, the league. I'm still going to disagree with selling ESR. I want ESR to get that from the league. Like, save, 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 save. Oh, I know it's the right oh, thing, but save. But as mine, it's an emotional much. decision, a hundred percent. This is where we have to say, like, and when it comes to when we will eventually judge Edu and Arteta, eventually. A lot of the people, it's all going to be down to what how successful they are in terms of trophies at the end. Of it, the it's day. become a trophy thing now. Like we got to be honest. Like is. we got to be honest. Like obviously, you know, we'll get onto the quadruple shout for for Mooks in a sec. But like, unless we win the Prem or champs, and I don't, I don't think it's necessarily wrong if we're bigging up the manager, if we're so innovative, if we're this, that, the third. There needs to be something etched in history. God forbid, but the world ends tomorrow under Mikel Arteta. Yeah, we've won an FA Cup, which some would say majority Emre squad. There's nothing etched in history, really and truly, to big up what we're talking about. So I want to ask that. Like, so how much is on Arteta then? Because being as that like, being devil's advocate, it's like you've got a free hit to do everything, and then everyone else is going to be blamed but you, from the players to Edu. So how much of this is on Arteta? Because did he want to advocate for Kai Havertz? Because we do when you do read the Athletic, and again, I don't know if the Athletic know what they're talking about, but they do seem to be the mouthpiece of the club. You hear that there was concerns about signing Raya when we had Ramsdale at the time. There was concerns about a left back. There was concerns about there's death or something else. I'm missing out. Um, for the life of me, I can't remember. But uh, long story short, Arteta has been the one to push and been the driving seat. It's so. How much is this is on Arteta? Because as much as all the signings have worked out, and I know not everything can work out, there was still Lokonga, there was still Tavares, there was still Fabio Vieira. There's, there's, there's probably even a couple men I'm missing. So how much has to be placed on the feet of Arteta? Don't get twisted. I believe in the guy, but is that he could do no wrong then? Is yeah, that a lot? It, it, exactly. The, and this is why it's, it's like an internal battle because I feel like even as Arsenal fans, a, a lot of us are starting to think now, 
well, what, 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 what you don't really have anything to cry about anymore, in it. Like maybe some of us might say a number nine, but I mean, if you do, if you think about it, he wanted Havertz in it, and I feel like because he wanted he wanted Havertz for the midfield in it, and he did it bang, yeah, and it did. It, Okay, I did. I, I kind of disagree. I I didn't mind him in the midfield. In it, I I saw what he was game seeing. by game. I'm on for it, not on it, not on a consistent basis though. Yeah, I, I, for me, I anyways. saw what he was seeing in it, but I feel like because he then got then he moved him into the nine. I feel like in his mind, the player that I really wanted is actually banging in the nine. We don't need a nine, so I put that on him. So the lack of having an out and out goal scorer. I put on Arteta. So if if we lost the league, the goal difference, then I'm I'm on Arteta. Really. Gonna hold that. Yeah, you have you have to hold that. But I do think a lot a lot of the fan base are kind of moving like he can do no wrong. Like it, yeah, because like, it does feel like a cult to a degree. I think there's very few balance. I think people slag the guy off, or some people glaze him. I think, and you lot are you know exceptions. I think there's very few balanced fans when it comes to Arteta. And I don't blame them because this is probably the most exciting time of the Emirates era. And there's some fans, like I'm 29, there's some fans younger than me. Reality is, this is the best they've seen Arsenal. And it, it killed me bro. to say that. It's the best I've see seen. What I'm saying? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I don't even see the Invincibles, man. Like, I, I don't even know what the good time feel like. Oh, that's oh, is the best time. Oh, I, I don't know why. I asked Chuck Gold, I come in at the right time. I used to get called a glory hunter for supporting this club, mate. Like, <laughs> times change. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, on the goal like, where I disagree is that if you look at Man City, right, who have got the most prolific goal scorer, but you can argue Harry Kane or, you know, maybe other players, but in terms of out and out number nine, we're only five goals behind them last season. But we was five so, goals behind them. Yeah, but it's only five, though, without a... What's, you yeah, know, but it's like... So it's goal scoring isn't... And Trossard right. was a bit part player and Havertz did it for half a year, being devil's advocate. It's not set in stone that the man they would do it again, purely being devil's advocate. Like, you see, for me, do you know what it is, yeah? I don't understand we was only X amount behind because for me, we we was behind. It's just lucky that we was in a scenario where us being behind in goals didn't actually have any impact on the final day. It had no impact because we weren't tied on points. But then I guess it has a bit of impact when maybe we look at certain games that we played and went, oh, if we just buried that chance. And that's where I feel like... We need, but that's always going to be the case, though, because if you have a number nine that then misses that one opportunity, I, he can yeah, score but, fifty goals, but because he missed that one, that didn't win us the league. We can sit there and go, actually, well, did, did it matter? Because we do that with <laughs> Harry Kane. Fam. I do that with Harry Kane. I yeah. don't give a shit. What does this goal mean? Like, I don't even, I don't like yeah, but, this whole world class shot. I don't even care because what did it mean? Nothing. Because when bit, it mattered, when it mattered, did you step up? And the answer is no. It's a bit different though because like. Uh, I, you guys will reveal your age. I won't do the same because it's uncle sittings, yeah. But <laughs> you get me? To me, yeah. Tottenham never feared them, man. Like you get me? I I I, I grew up quite close to Tottenham as well, so man used to see them Trust. all the time. Like it, it's a it's a little bro thing, isn't it? So when I look at Harry Kane, yeah, I go obviously when he was there, man knew them all the time. Uh, Tottenham, dickhead. But when he left Tottenham. I went, you know what? I'm happy for you, in it Because you're now going to go into a team that's better. Like, when Harry Kane was... Going to win trophies. Exactly. When Harry Kane was... Yeah, but then, he, then the one time he joined, they didn't yeah. win the trophy. So. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's also true. But, like, come on, he's going to pick up like, something at Bayern, I mean, man. That, that's being petty, in it? But, like, if... so when it's Kane petty, was, was, When Kane was doing the it's job... It's both, man. It's both. It's both. Slightly. <laughs> when Kane was doing the job for Tottenham, yeah... If you put him into Manchester United or you put him into Chelsea... City even tried to cop him. Exactly. You put him into City, he wins trophies. So it's not necessarily Kane well, didn't winning up. trophies anyways, it's, isn't it? So the, it's... it's the rest of... Yeah, but they were doing that before they brought Haaland, to be fair. Yeah, exactly. It's the rest of the team. And, and, this, is the, and this is why... Because if you think about it, our manager talks a lot about balance, yeah? And we all know our right-hand side levels, Yeah. And we know the problem with the left hand side, but if we're talking, I, about... I want a left winger more than I want a striker. I don't actually think that. I thought that would have been a given in the summer, and that's where I'm vexed with Edu because for me, I, like 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 T said, obviously you try to sign people, dynamic shift. There was Copa America, there was Euros, so I do cut them a lot of excuses. But at the same time, these are not excuses that are just synonymous with Arsenal. 
everyone's had to do this. So, and obviously you want the right player, you want the right profile. As T said, we're very, you know, we scrutinize who we want to sign. But it always, to me, and as much as I understand that, it's always that this mysterious kind of player that we're looking for, which I don't doubt that recruitment's working. If, it, if we were Real Madrid or City, I'd kind of hear that because there's a small amount of players. And I know us fans, we love to sit here and talk about a gazillion players. And if we could make decisions, we might not be where we're at. But that's where my criticism is. Like when Edu comes out and I've got nothing against Sterling, I like him. But at the end of the day, he's damaged goods. He was not a first choice target. What I don't feel helps Sterling is we've obviously signed him on the last day of the season where you haven't brought in a Nico Williams. Even the Nico Williams thing. Now, fair enough. The man there that work in football, maybe Nico Williams was saying, yeah, I'm going to sign you. I'm going to do, I, I want to sign for you. I want to do this, that and the third. But to me, it, it st stunk of the Rafina thing where you're essentially the third option. You're still in there and you're trying to narrate the intention behind it. But I'm not here for the we tried thing. And that's why I'm with Souls. I thought striker, I wanted it. Whether it was Jokerez or Isaac, an impossible dream, I wanted a striker. But, you know, the striker market, money, for me, it, it became clear that we needed to sell players before we could bring in. I said, you know what, bring me a left winger because there's too much volatility. I like Trossard, but I don't think Arteta rates him as a consistent starter. Martinelli's form's volatile. We failed to do that. And yet Sterling's not here per permanently. And then our, our technical director comes out and says, yeah, to be fair, this is what we plan to do. If you did everything else and you got in Sterling and said, you know, we're active to the market, cool, because well, it's very different. But we probably didn't plan to sign Mesut Ozil when we did and you've done something. But that's where I'm annoyed because it's like we're making improvements, but it's like how far do we go before we either make serious steps forward or there's a temporary step backwards. I'm tired of being a bridesmaid. I want to be a groom, if that makes and, sense. Man. And can I say this? Can I say this uh, And before the mandem jump in? I don't think our, our our difference between us and Manchester City actually is quality anymore on, in, on the pitch. I think it was mentality, and I think that's changed. I hear that. I think that's changed. I do think the mentality shift. And I heard it last season, and I disagreed. I was speaking to my um, Villa brethren, who, because, you know, I've been from Birmingham there, got a lot of them there. And he said it last season. I, I disagreed with it. I said, no, it's definitely the quality. But looking at how we can now win games at our worst is something. That, that very team you mentioned. Aston Villa. We exactly were shit. Let's that. be honest. We were shit until we scored. Like, we let's we, be we played honest. Villa three times in the past, what, 12 months. Um, and, and that was the worst we played against them. But that was the one that we... Emery's had our number for a minute. Nice, no, nice exactly. to see that somewhat changed. We played better against Manchester City two other times. And if you think about it, and we nearly won the one yesterday. Like that's at right. fine margins. So that's where we're talking about and how and all the reactions that we spoke about. That is how Arsenal now cross the line and our identity. And yes, our, there is that you can always improve in football. You've never, you're never, you're never the perfect. You never reach the pinnacle. I don't believe that because you can always improve goals defensively. But our identity is through what we can do in our defence. And that's where we're the best in the world. Nobody can talk to us in terms of what we can do out of possession. 10 men, 5-4-0, City, limiting City to shots outside the box. To that, that says a lot. Going away to Spurs, doing the same thing. And, and we can criticise Spurs, but they can create chances, guys. That's they can, the and they've got good players, man. Like, I don't wanna, I'm not going to praise Spurs too much, but you're right <laughs> on that. You know what I mean? And guys, this is, this is what it is. And the best team from set pieces, that's where we score goals when we're not gonna we're not playing at our best. So yes, there is other ways and we can improve. And and I think in long term that we will. But my thing is this Arsenal team, there is no excuses now for us to go and get a major honor, at least at least one of one of the major ones. That's what I'm so all right, at. cool, cool. Boom. Now we can get into it. Remember, you said it, yeah. You know, um, Hook said quadruple, you've alluded to a prem. Obviously. I want to win a trophy, but cool. If there is no excuses and we don't get the Prem champs, I hear it. I would love the champs. I'd rather the champs than the Prem. But if we don't win this Premier League title, then how do we look at Arteta? What sort of scrutiny should he face? Because he's just signed a new deal. He has spent a lot of money. He's, you know, I don't want to say the neutral's favourite because we're not liked, but outside of City, I think we're probably the second best. So how do we look at this then? For me, if we don't win anything this season, then Arteta's got to go. For for this is, That's this is first, though. This, this is for me, in it because, uh, like, because then it gets to the point where you have a, a really good crop of players and you're just walking them off the plank, pretty much. Like you're sending them, you're sending them to the pits of hell. Like you're just wasting all the. And how long before Saliba and them man yeah. think, oh, you know what? Exactly, and then what's going to happen is, yeah, pe people are going to slew me for, oh, 
you're saying oh, her out, oh, you're not seeing the vision, you're not being you need to be patient. But then two twos, when Saliba goes, then man are gonna be saying to me, Oh, oh maybe we should have got rid of our tech, you know. So do you know that it, 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 at, at some point, yeah, at some point, and, and look, yeah, again, I'm an old I, I'm an oldish man, in it. So I've seen Arsenal. The Arsenal that all, all the Arsenal fans talk about now, yeah, when they refer to heritage and all them things, I grew up watching them. And the one thing that I can tell you, yeah, is it don't matter how much the players like the club, it don't matter how long they've been there, it don't matter how much the fans love them, there will always come that time where they want to win that Champions League. Yo, I, I, I had to watch, yeah. And I know it is again. Of Thierry Henry saying sorry to me because he's leaving the club, bro. Yep. I, I yep. swear down, it's one of the only times, yeah. I won't lie, I cried. Yeah, exactly. It's one of the only times yeah, like. where I've cried about something that's not connected to, to my life like that. Do you know what I mean? So this is the thing that a lot of young fans don't quite understand, yeah, is there comes a point, yeah, where... It don't matter how much you gaslight the club or the players or or whatever, but these men will leave and then we'll be in an even worse position. And then it's at that point everybody's gonna start coming out, being like, you know, you know them, you know them ones, yeah, where 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 you're having swingers, yeah. And there's that one guy that, I was did you see me? I was there, you know, like that's what the men are gonna be like. Yeah, I was there saying I'll take her out, you know, but really and truly, you know the right. We know that they won. So this is why I say I'm clearing up. I ain't never gonna say that from you. You're never gonna hear that come out of my mouth. That's there. That's listen. that now it's getting into a cult thing. Like that's a yeah, cult yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't yeah, think you can have sold a soul. Call, call, call it label it what you want, yeah. But let me tell you now, there is no one better to run this club at the moment than our set I don't I don't his doubt players, that. I, I don't doubt players, that. I me, I support our tech. It's just you're really not gonna have a free run at things. Walls, fam. No, no, no. But these players like the minute I start to see that they're not running through a brick wall for him. Is when I say, okay, do you know what? Now the time's to go. But right yeah. now, these men are running and they are working. They are putting their body damage from they, they could be, you know, decreasing their career length for this guy. You can see the work that they're putting in, the way they're coming out in the media. The way that now, yeah, even when Harland, yeah, came out and said to stay humble thing, they all crowded Harland and said, yo, the manager, you move back, so we'll, we're going to take this Harland's off. Harland's a pussy for that once again. No, no, you can be a pussy, but the, the reaction from the players, yeah, they were like, nah, fam, you're the boss here, yeah, let us sort you out. Like I said, he's the mafia boss, yeah, and he had his little, you know, his um, his people, oh, sort yeah, his hitmen. He had so, Gabriel Magalhães, me... Jesus, the tiny players, and MLS, right, comes out and goes, you know what, I'll take, I'll scrap Harlan for you. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, Fools. I don't like, think we can let a guy like that go without disrupting this team. It like, could be that we let Arteta go and Saliba goes, fuck this, I'm out. So, so, so let me say this though because I'll, let me, I'll, I'll relate this back to Liverpool yeah I think every, most Liverpool there'll be Liverpool fans who had been exactly the same about you and Klopp uh, about the view uh, how they thought about Klopp can't let this man go he's brought us all this success and they had the trophies to show for it but I think there might be some the same Liverpool fans now that might turn around and say yeah Klopp's amazing this and that love and respect but honest slot in terms of how he's getting us to play might actually be better in terms of winning these big things. So you never know. So maybe you're not going to turn around and say Arteta out, like, you know, how how it kind of got to with the Wenger days. I hear that. But there is always going to be a time to move on. And there will be time eventually, even if Arteta goes to be one of the greatest managers we ever have. Well, if he gets a big boy time, job, like, to, to, to go back to what we were saying great. earlier, yeah, like, mm -hmm. we were talking about Edu and kind of doing him dirty. How long before, if that was the case, Arteta gets frustrated and says, you know, I've taken this club as far as I can go. Bear exactly. in mind, he's a young manager. I want to cut them. Yeah. And you need a fresh project. That's what I mean. And they needed that freshness. I think, it, again, it's early days. Liverpool might not do anything this season. But from what I'm seeing, they needed that freshness. They needed that new ideas. They needed that new approach. Trust me, the same way you spoke about how our players will run through the map. Nah, but the, the thing you don't know how to do a Trent Alexander-Arnold said those exact house. words for, for Jurgen Klopp. I will run through a brick wall for this man. And... Yes, this is but then there's age in it, fam. It's like, you know, when you're sending your parents and old people home, you know, they're not going to run through brick walls like they used to. They're not going to change your nappies like they used to. That's the problem. They're an old, they're a retirement home at the moment. All their best players are 30. 
So like they're not gonna be able to. They can't run. Even if they wanted to, they can crawl through brick walls for him. But they ain't running. So that's well, the problem. What, what what can we do right now? We've got a young crop of players who are literally like, yeah, we'll get stabbed for you. They got pickpocketed, and no one came out and said we didn't even know until six months later that they got pickpocketed. Well, Think bro, about it, man. Like, there's no leaks coming out. There's no infighting. There's nothing. Like, they are Gucci. They're happy. That even the young players like Ethan Nawari, okay, yeah, the Martin OB, whatever, you know, that situation was different. But Ethan, you know, is willing to trust Arteta. You know, Miles Blue Skelly's coming through and going, I trust this man with my career. But, like, Ethan could dip because he's like, yeah, I've got no evidence at all that he's going to play so, me. So I don't disagree with what you're saying, but what you've just, but what I'm also going to caveat is, and in this, this is kind of me playing devil's advocate, but it's also a true point. We know how intense Arteta is. That intensity for so long is can be a drainer as well, not just for Arteta, but for the players. Look at, again, Man City. Pep Guardiola is very intense and he rejuvenates that squad and adds in and replaces key players it seems like for year on year, look at Jao Cancelo, once upon a time was one a key man for Pep. And then it got too much. Riyad Mahrez, Aguero, you know what I mean? These play, it's too yeah, much. Yeah, but these men are they old and they to So, and Come Pep on, himself, like... and the reason why Pep's gone in for so long is because one, he's been so successful and he's been at the best club to be successful at in, in the world in terms of how they operate. And, and he's been able to. That's been able to reinvigorate him and having that rejuvenation. So I think when it look, you have to. That's why when you say, and I challenge you when you say, I'm never gonna say that. Is I hear it. I hear it from the passion and love. No, no, the, the only time, time, the only time, time I say this so, when I don't what? see that. We have to be honest. Or it, or it might be diff- their way through, then yeah. yeah. That's why he's only signed a three year deal. Like we we know that things can change quickly in football. We haven't done the Chelsea thing nine years, you know, and and get locked in, and then it's hard to part ways, and you have to pay a mad way, mad way to get out. Three years that suits Arteta, and it suits the club because things can change. And if we were, if we didn't win anything, then we'd have to ask questions and look at it because, as I've just said, Yo, and, fam, and, I, and I know that books agree with me, to and I'd love to hear Primsy's thoughts. But this team is good enough to win. I don't. Yeah, let's bring Prems in, man. Because yeah, man. It's a let's, mentality let's, now. Let's bust Prems in, man. Yeah, what, what have you got to see? Obviously, you've jumped midway through. From what you engaged in a conversation in relation to Arteta, how long's he got? Where you look at him if we don't bring this trophy home or a trophy home? Yeah, man. Talk to us, bro. No, first of all, thank you for having me on. Big up. Come there. on, my guy. Okay, I don't think I've chopped it up with you before, so I do apologize if I don't know your names. But no, much respect, man. Um, do you know what? For me, obviously, this is just my opinion and I'm not speaking for nobody else, but I, I see it like you got to call football as it is right now in front of you. We all, as football fans, tend to be fucking fortune tellers and everything. You get me? This is going to happen. That's going to happen. Or you know, it is like, and then you get called a flip flop when you change your opinion. But for me, I see football, what's in front of me in it. And right now, I can see the progression Arteta's made. And I, we, we can all see the challenge in City in it. You know what I mean? Obviously, we still got a lot of the season to dive into to say, yeah, we are challenging in it because a few games is nothing. But the trajectory we're going on, it looks like we're going to be challenging City for this league again for the third time. Now, with me, I would say it depends on if, say we don't win the league, it depends on how we don't win the league. If we don't win the Cups, it depends on how we don't win the Cups. If he goes for the Cups instead of throwing them away, etc. And that's how I would look on it. And I would then give him one more year. After that, if regardless if he comes close or not, I would definitely be looking to move on because there's an argument for, you know, these players, if Arteta got off, they might leave. But there's also an argument saying that if Arteta stays and overstays his stay, we might be losing the potential of winning so something. Big. spoke about trophies as well to age a point P. Exactly. We might be <laughs> missing the opportunity to, to win something big. With these players, you get me, then Saliba might... I know Saliba's going to be going to Real Madrid in a few years. Best believe... I think we've all, we've all accepted that one still. You get me? Now, look, obviously, as a fan, we don't want that to be the case in it. Yeah, if we win the Champions League and so on and so on, there's a good possibility in it. But if you look at it from just a, a picture from we haven't won anything just yet and if it carries on in this kind of way, bro, he, he's... it. Obviously, we can't see he's the best centre-back in world football now, but he, he's there and thereabouts in it. And Real Madrid are going to come knocking. And when that club comes knocking, it doesn't matter whoever you are, yo, they're mm. coming with the big red key, mate. You get me? They're coming with the big Fact. red key. And they're Can't just licking no that them, door down. So, but it's, it's, not all, it's not all disarray for us because if we do go on and win, start winning some big trophies, 
the the feel good factor that the club has, that Arteta and everybody around the club has built. You get me people wanting to come to us like Calafiori, etc. It, it puts us in a good stead in it. So it is one of them. We got to just wait and see how the season pans out. Back the boys, yeah, fucking. Hopefully we can go and do it. If we can't do it, we got to assess in which ways we fa failed. And then it's not as easy as sacking Arteta and just bringing any Tom, Dick and Harry in. We've got to look and see who's actually going to come and step in. Who's going to actually not only give us what Arteta's giving us, but push us beyond that. Do you know what I'm saying? And there's right. no guarantee of nothing. And always, the grass ain't always greener on the other side. Look, bro, I was, like I say, bro, everyone knows what my thoughts were on Arteta at the start. But, bro, that was going off no evidence of anything. But a few years being at the club, I can go off and say, right, OK, I've been supporting my club for a long time. And at the moment, it looks like we're serious again. And it's been a long time since I've said that, bro. And as a fan, right. yeah, that spends money going watching my team, yeah. That's all I want. I want to be, wake up, yeah, every fucking year when it comes to the new season, thinking, yeah, my team's in it with a, with a chance in to win with this the show. You get me? Bro, I've been waiting fucking years, bro. Every season of that, getting slapped up, slapped up, slapped up. You get Facts. me fucking out, man. And you was at the game at the Etihad that. as well, so you've seen the change. Oh. No, it's a mad thing, bro. It's actually, it's actually mad. But look, the players that we've got in the team, man, you you gotta you gotta take your hat off to them, especially for that city performance. And yeah, it does feel like a loss to a certain degree. But if you're a smart man and you know 45 minutes against the best team in the world with 10 men, yo, it's a difficult task, bro. And if they would have scored in the 50, 60 minute, bro, it would have been a long night. So they 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 did what they needed to do in it. For me, it was a must not lose game. And even though it does feel like a loss, bro, it. Man City, I said it in my AFTV interview, they were shook, bro. I ain't seen Man City like that before, moving erratic. You get me? That me, that that's a team that's shook. And I don't know what anyone pitch. says. Bro, exactly that. So, you know what? You just got to give uh, Arteta credit, man, because at the start of the season, I did say, I put my hands out there, I said, you know what? I think we'll win the league this year. And that was obviously prior to the, the closing of the window because it was quite underwhelming for me at the end. But then the injuries kicking in, I started to doubt myself. But you know what? Every time I doubt myself, this guy <laughs> comes in, yeah, and says, "Yo, bro, check easy, yourself, man. yo. Don't doubt me. You get me." So I just got, I just got to let it run, man. I got to let it run. So how do you lot feel about the league cups and the, well, league cups, just the cup competitions? Because what I don't want to be rude to Arteta and say he throws it away, but I think Champions League, you gave a good account of ourselves. But generally, I've seen you do mad things, and it's been underwhelming for me since we last won the FA Cup. It's not been good. League Cup, I'm not going to kill you for that. But for a young, impressionable team that hasn't won trophies, we need to win that. Now, I know fans will move the goalposts. If we win the League or FA Cup, League Cup or FA Cup, people will say it's only that. But do you think we need to take these things seriously? And also, lads, do you feel we've got a big enough squad? FA Cup, 100%. 100% FA, FA Cup, yeah, because Manchester United are, are one away from, from, from matching our thing in it. So we need to, we need to create... The gap again, do you know what I mean? So FA Cup, hundred percent. Me personally, I don't really care about the League Cup in it. For me, the League Cup's always been a, hey, we got some young G's in the squad, you know. Let's let's give them some time to experience like real like you get me professional Men's football. Yeah, 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 all of that. And for me, I just need that Champions League, man. Trust me, I can't lie. I just need that. I just need that Champions League, man. Like it's the it's the one thing, the one thing that man can chat to me about, yeah. And I just need. And we have to win it in the new version of it now yeah, as well. Man. People gonna wear it down. We have we have to do it, man. But I, I, I think maybe last season I think is a bit unfair to say he didn't take the. Uh, what was it? The FA Cup that was it? The FA Cup or the League Cup? No, the FA Cup last year we went out to Liverpool in it. We just couldn't yeah. put the ball in the so, back of the net. Fair nah, play Liverpool were playing. Liverpool were playing kids and that, bro. Fucking Ali threw shit away. A nah, big man, he'd been throwing the cups away for a long time. Apart from the first season, yeah, when he came in and he he, he did what he did, yeah, we got to call it as it is. He, he's been throwing the cups away, yeah, and I, I'm not with it. You get me? I don't want to see that. If I see man start throwing the cups away, fuck that, you get me? Then that's that's not for me. I understand, yeah, you want to go for the two big trophies, but you're the guy who's come in now. You've got to build a squad to challenge on all fronts because if Man City can do it, yeah, there's no fucking excuse. That's the truth Liverpool of the matter, isn't it? And Premzy, and Premzy, that's that's what I'm that's what I mean. I, I've I've got to have the attitude, the same attitude as the players, because they the, what Arteta is going to be telling them. You're not letting any stone unturned. Remember that phrase that I said earlier. Do not leave any competition. Yes, you'll play the young G's in the at League Cup, but they're just as part of the team as well. You saw it on preseason. 
and how and how Arteta was praised. Sorry, yesterday with Lo young Lewis Skelly, to be fair. Lewis Skelly in coming on, it, yeah. Duanieri coming on in, in these big games. Come on, there's a lot of trust. He knows it's a squad game. There's no such thing as throwing it away now, especially. And mm. if you want to have every edge and get over Man City and the likes of and, and try and build a successful team, you can't let anything go. Not saying that no, we, this, we this should put more fire in the belly, you know. Sorry exactly. to interrupt you. This should put more fire in the belly. No. After all this... Yeah, this I'm telling you now, they should be going for every game, yeah, oh, exactly. with that extra, that extra, because yo, Arteta got, well, he got it stuck on him by Harlem, bro. Mm -hmm. Man stuck it on him, yo. So right, the fuck are you, bro? You get me more or less, <laughs> isn't it? You Don't forget, me. a couple of years ago, he pushed Kevin DeBrand, Kevin DeBrand, and pushed him as well. Yeah, I mean, you need to stop all of that. So, the oh, little, the I little pushed the ball in Gabriel's head. Yeah, the little mentality edge oh, that he would say don't give Man City anything to celebrate about this season. Not, not a League Cup, not a FA Cup, nothing. That's what our edge is. And that's how the players are going to be going to it. So me as a fan, I get, I'm get, i actually with you, Hooks, in terms of the prioritising it and what I think we really should go. But go for everything, man. That's that's my attitude. And You know what? If you start winning Carabao Cups, yeah, it gives you, it gives you a, a, Jose Mourinho a feel of winning. Club. Now, it gives yeah. you a feel of winning, you get me? And it, it gives it gives the club right looks. I'm not going to lie to you. I can't remember the last time I seen us lift the Carabao Cup or whatever Trust. it is. Trust. Uh, big man thing, yo. I, I wouldn't mind seeing one still. I wouldn't mind seeing one, you know what? Friends, friends, being from, being know, from right? Birmingham, it, it, it I remember our last crazy. final. Uh, yeah, and our last Car Carling Cup final. Oh, I, we, we, yeah. we got beat by Birmingham or something in the last Brother, Yeah, um, man, we got sourced. I couldn't step out. I was a child. I was a youth back then. I couldn't step out. I Arsenal. think Koscielny fucked up, didn't he, in it? Sitting and Chesney. Yeah. I'm sure we got to one with, with Pep as well, man. I think Mustafi fucked up at Wembley, yes, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. been filled with pain, huh. man. Premzi's right. Yeah. Oh, no, it's yeah. mad. No, no, but do you know what it goal, is? So it's it's probably more trophies. important to win that Carabao Cup than any other trophy this season. And I, the reason why I say this is when Pep Guardiola sure, came into Man City... No, no, I'll explain it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm even back. I get why it's a wild take. I get why it's a wild take, right? But I'll explain it. Because we've not won anything. So we don't know. We've only felt the pain of not winning. But we've never felt what it like what it's like to win. None of these players have. Like nationally, I'm talking. I'm talking like, you know, locally as well for clubs. If they get that feeling of winning a Carabao Cup, that momentum shift, right, to go, do you know what? We ain't, we we want this feeling. We don't want that feeling of feeling. You know, no, I the think there's, there's, there's like players that. in that squad that know how what winning is. Jorginho's one, no, no. Sterling's one, Jay Juice's one. No, no, which I understand, but I'm talking like the main one. players, because these are side chicks. Yeah, man, what role is still? Yo, Havertz, Havertz is one. You know and what I mean? Which I understand. They weren't side chicks. As a group. Yeah, yeah, but when Pep's come in, the, the priority for him, and he's come out and said it many times, was I needed them to feel like the winners. And that's why I went for the Carabao Cup, because he, he took it seriously. He used to play his starting eleven in the Carabao Cup to win that, and that spurred them on to win the Premier League. And that's what we mm. probably need to do, and that's why I'm saying nah, it's probably good, good. important. That a bit's a good part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I see. Yeah. That's where I see where your point is, Souls. Exactly. Yeah. Like, if we we're playing Bolton on Wednesday, of course there's going to be lots of changes, and you can afford to make that. And so, and can we in the game? Uh, boy, Bolton's our bogey team, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some hey, yeah, well, that's years ago, man. That's years, mm -hmm. But I hear it. Um, I remember them days. That we we went down to ten men and, and came back free to remember that one. But um, now, nah, list but with this with the Carabao Cup, if we're facing Man City. In the next round, he's making changes, but there's it's putting a strong team out, and so is Pep Guardiola. And the same thing with Liverpool and Slot. That's what that's the type, and we can't afford to do what we did last year. Um, and say, Yeah, that's it, we'll move on. No, we gotta be gutted and disappointed about if we do that. And I hope, I hope that we go and win a, a league cup, as many trophies as possible. Yeah, getting four is unprecedented, but again. You've got to have that sense of belief and confidence that we can go out and win every single game because it feels like that's what's going to have to be to go and win a league, let alone a Champions League. Yeah, but well, I don't know. These these might need to try to go in invincible. Yo, they try to aim for that. Yeah, you never know when it might win aim something. <laughs> Yeah, aim for aim for the aim for space, and you might land on the start. You know, aim for the nah, bro. We got a seriously mean? sick defense, man. Trust me, man. That's something not to be a joke, bro. I'm telling you, know, bro, you, I'm going Man game, City, yeah. you must have seen it differently as well, bro. I, I'm going to Man City year in year out. Yeah, batty in my mouth, mate. I'm telling you, thinking, <laughs> yo, it's gonna be, yo, it's gonna, be, yo, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be. trust gonna me, bro. Corn. You get spanked there all the time. You get me. Uh, obviously, last season was all right, so obviously that was okay. You've got a draw, or whatnot. But this season it was different, bro. Like obviously we conceded early, but 
you never really felt like you were going to get pelted. And then even when we went down to 10 men and we went to that back like 6-3 or whatever mad it was, yeah. Yo, bro, it was, you just felt like, yeah, City could score, but you've got faith in your boys in it. When man's watching Mustafi and Socrates and Squalachi and all yeah. these man, Sendros and all of that, you get me, bro? Yeah, man's yeah. thinking, no, 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 no. You get me? There will be shot. baby food yesterday, man. Psh, exactly. But Saliba Gabriel, yeah, and I think it was a smart move by him bringing um, Timbering on the right and Calafiorian because I say as it is, your Ben White's been shit since for a few games now, you get me? And because a lot of us love our players and I don't like to say it as it is, bro. You just got to say it as it is. He's been shit, bro. He's giving the ball away in that, getting running behind. He, he wasn't doing well. So Arteta seeing it and, and changing it up, yo, uh, that's another thing I give him credit for. And look, what happened, Calafiori, bro? Tell you, my man, Maldini in the making, innit? That's what I'm hearing out here. So we're going to have to hair. wait and see. He's going to have to wait and see. Correct. Yeah. No, that, that guy is like a fan on the pitch, man. He just wants to be hit. Though, even the way he's celebrating, you could tell he was in shock. I mean, he was like, so the first time I've seen someone run to Arteta, you know, to be fair with you. Yeah. Mm. Big oh, up to him, so yo. Grateful. I yeah. love it, man. I love it. And you know what? He knew he scored before he even went in and that, bro. I'm telling you, because when yeah, I came yeah. back and watched the replay and all that, and uh, seeing it, I thought, yeah, yeah, he definitely knew what was going on. He started making his run. Confidence, man. The player with confidence, that's what we need. We need confidence, yeah. players. Bro, you know what? For a big guy, though, he can move. Like the way he just glides past people, yeah, it's crazy. Like he's, he's a baller. He's a big physical mm. player, but he can. He, he's he's not it. quick though, isn't it? He's not quick. No, no, he he's good with he's the ball. Like nah, nah, nah. In the Premier out. League, best believe you need to be quick, bro. Because trust me, you get no, your ass caught one know, time, this, especially uh, the position he's playing. Trust mm -hmm. me, man. No, I can't like the physique of being your brother give him a bit of stress. Bro, look what Zinchenko, man. Look, bro, we, do you know what I mean? He's in, if he yeah, plays Zinchenko's in that role. A bit, he's, he's stupid and smart, though, isn't it? That's the problem. He's a bit of <laughs> mm. he's, he, No, but what I'm saying, it can happen, innit? He, can happen. he doesn't compute the defensive work. But attackingly, yeah, he's great. He's got the brain for it. But where is he, Califiori? I think the opposite. He's an IQ player for me. He just mm. knows where to be at the right time. He looks yeah, good. he got cooked. But I feel like in the first half, he got cooked. But I think he'll learn from it. He's, it's his first, like, actual start for us. So, um... You know, credit to him, man. Like, the mentality to just go and take that uh, one nil down is exactly what we need. We need some risk mm. takers. The one thing that we complain about, there's not enough goals outside of the box and midfield or, you know, other players other than our attack is actually bringing goals in. And he just struck mm. that. And he struck that with superb, like, confidence. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm hoping that, uh, that Mikel Marino gives us that as well because we've actually lost that with Granite Xhaka. With Granite Xhaka, you knew every now and again, especially for some reason against Crystal Palace. He used to love it, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. Bang one, oh, United. Yeah, United. Yeah, United yeah, well. Bang one, so... Now, Mikel Moreno is different, though. The problem with him is inside the box is where he... Excites. I don't really outside know him, bro. Is a bit, yeah, but yeah, surely he's still... A... I hear that, but he's going to be playing the eight, isn't it? Surely that... I don't know. It could be two eights, could be two sixes. Surely that Clarice goes back to being the six and Moreno tries to do the jacket I'm telling you, it's the only way it'll work because the problem with, like... Um, Mikel Moreno, as much as I love the player on the profile, he's quite the opposite to Xhaka in terms of their mm. strengths or their weaknesses. Whereas a Granny Xhaka can ping a ball and find someone like over the top. Mikel Moreno's a bit more tippy tappy, you know, evading the press and kind of keeping the control of the game. A bit and more risk averse. Where he excels inside the box, he's a phenomenon. Like he is what we wanted Kai Havers to be able to do is what Mikel Moreno will do. Like he'll find that late run into the box and header it in. That's where he excels. The problem is. Outside of the box, he's a bit hit and miss. He's a bit marmite in that sense. But that's where I think Califiori and Zinchenko have upped their game. Like, seeing that goal yesterday, when you look at Zinchenko against Bayern Leverkusen coming in and just scoring that goal, I feel like that's where that kind of goal is. Yeah, going. Zinchenko, you can oh, play against Bolton if you're fit. I'm not trying to see you where does no, these no, dependents are now, man. I, I, I don't want to see him. I don't think he's got, a, he's got a right to play for the club anymore. But, Damn. you know, I feel like the difference is, right, that Martinelli, for me, is going to excel. His goals are going to come back as soon as Moreno comes in. If we do the uh, no, no, no end product, a man, and... no end product, Martinelli, no end no, no, product. I'm telling you now as it yeah, is. Yeah, but the position that he'll find himself in is the same ones where he got the double digits, and that's why I think he's going to start excelling in that sense because he's going to be allowed to. Do... At the moment, we're telling him to do too much. That like it's not his game. He has to put his head up. He has to think. I can't lie, he just needs to go do some finishing he's drills, man. Because he's getting exactly, the right bro. positions. Too many excuses for him, bro. If we no, want to no, be no, a no, serious club, yeah, you get me. We go out and get a serious winger. It's simple as that, no, yo. I like Martinelli, and I've rated him highly. 
But bro, you got no end product, yeah. You got to call it as it no, is, bro. No, so many opportunities he's had. Footballer. No, no, no. If you no give him product, nothing to I'm think about you. and just say, yeah, go do this, yeah. Trust me, he, he'll be accept. The problem is we're telling him nah, to think, Headless chicken most of the time, bro. Fucking hell, in the last third, yeah. Like, I love Martin I Ellie, but that God, is bro. Cheap. I, I actually love the guy. And you know what? I've always said he should be a striker, yeah. And I've rated him and ranted him to rave. But you know what? Yeah, when you actually deep it and look at it and you think, you know what? We actually need to win something now, isn't it? He's not going to... Yeah, he might have got us 20 goals or whatever one season. He's not going to do that year in, year out. And I've seen enough to know that. And in the last third, bro, he, he headless chicken. He, he nah, rushes his he he rushes his decisions. Nah, he's on turbo mode, bro. If he just took a little step back and nah, but he wouldn't have to worry about it. From him. Just say to him, look, yeah, lad, just go there and just shoot. That's all you got to do. Nah, he's yes, shooting, he's shooting, shooting. though. No, no, he's no, shooting. No, 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 Atalanta no, 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 over the bar. The Spurs no, no, one no, that... For me, he just needs to do some training drills, man. He's got to that now, bro. You need to just get some composure in front of goal. Nah, for me, you the right thing. Defensively, he's good. we can't at the moment. But That's offensively is good, but he's our attacker. We need to do he needs to be attacker first, defense second. You get me that in my honest opinion. And really and truly, he could be an impact player for us. We get a good quality, quality uh winger, yeah, and he could come on and be an impact. Last 15, 20 minutes, man are tired, get him on, get me, burn the back out of him, and that's it. Do you know what I'm saying? Because realistically, bro, he ain't gonna get us 20 goals every season. As much as we all love him and we want him to do well, he isn't gonna do it, bro. And I agree, year in, year I'm, I'm talking like how can we get a solution out of it whilst we have to use him and I'm saying take the thinking away from him he's a special needs kid and you got to just say to him look this is what you're good at he's, he's got that autistic mindset I'm not even trying to make a like, joke here he's got that autistic mindset like they're really good at just that one thing like tell him to do that one thing and just study 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 he excel and that's the way that I see Martinelli like get him into that position and just say to him look you don't even need to look up just look down Blindfold him, whatever, doesn't matter. Can, can I say, can I say, nah, nah, man, can we stop, please, man? Like, bro, this guy's dead, bro. Like, I'll be nah, he's not dead. Come, he's not dead. 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 We have to, we have to, not to get rid of him. We have to, what can we do? We have to play him, bro. No, we don't have to play him, bro. He can hold him, bro. He can actually hold him. Hey, you smiley. When he starts, he's awful when he starts. He's a good player. Like, look, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. This guy, when he's running, it's like his head games weight in it because all he's doing is looking down, bro. <laughs> like, and people love to make these excuses about, oh, it's our left hand side. Look, when Xhaka was there, he scored 15 mm. goals. But, bro, if you're a good player, it doesn't matter who's playing around you, bro. And mm -hmm. a lot of the problems with Martinelli has absolutely nothing to do with build up, it's when he actually has the ball in the position where wingers have the ball to be dangerous, bro. Like, for example, against Wolves, when he didn't look up and pass the ball to <laughs> to Declan Rice, when against who who was it? With me? Was it uh, at Atlanta? Atlanta he, twice. He didn't pass the ball mm. to Saka, or, or yeah, he took the shot and it was dead. That has so, so. nothing to do with who's playing left eight. <laughs> and Arsenal fans love to make excuses for this guy. Yeah, but mm -hmm. we just have I'm one of them. But I'm not like that. Yeah, we, we, like, look, don't get me wrong. I like Martinelli, man. I like him. I actually mm. agree with Pre Premzi. He was like, put him as a striker. I, I Martinelli as a striker probably would work because he just simplifies the game. Doesn't have less to think. thinking, he's less running thinking, behind. running behind the score. That's it. Yeah, literally, but, but even the scoring thing, like, right, that's that's what we need for you, Martinelli. But then I think to myself, <laughs> his peak overall mm. is is Martinelli a good enough player to have in a squad that wants to challenge on all fronts to say. I agree, Hooks, but the, that's not the point of making. I'm front. saying at no, the moment... Off, you might off, have to the, be bench, off the bench. Yeah, yeah, he, but the problem is we've got, well, other than Raheem Sterling, potentially, we'll see kind of how that goes. We've got two impact players. That's the problem. So it's like, how do we get the best out of them? Because we're going to have to start one of them. I would what? even rather, me personally, I would, I would rather dash Jesus there. I'd rather yeah, but if he's not in the there. hospital, he can play. I, but the problem I would is, rather man, even man likes the he hospital. Like, he's with Reese James, but he got a season pass in the hospital. What can we do? I, I'd even rather Wanyeri there. I'd be like, yo, Wanyeri, man, you want to try out the left wing? Bro, I, uh, this guy, yeah, I'm sorry. We play a brand of football that requires you to think. And if you're unable to think and make the split second decisions that benefit our attacking play, by the way, just hold bench. I ain't even saying he has to leave the club. Just hold bench. And then when there's 10 minutes left in the game and men are tired, 
come on, do your meet me and all of that, and then you get me, we see what I go on. But this guy, I'm no, sorry, right. no matter how much we love him, he cannot be starting for Arsenal Football Club. Can I do, can do, I say can I say my academy? Do we have like an academy player that right. can come in? Let me, I, I, I don't think anybody's ready. Uh, I'll be brutally honest. I don't think none of them are ready to walk in. I think we could have done a thing with Cozy Jubri, but he's cut in it. I don't think none of them are ready. You never know, but I don't think none of them are ready. With, with my thing with, with Martin Elliott and what I've noticed in the last three games in particular, you guys might not agree. But his performances overall, not in his finishing, we'll get to that and we'll get to those moments because in his performances overall has been the best I've seen in months in terms of how he's been able to challenge. Is this one of them excuses, bro? No, no, it's not an excuse. It's not an excuse because (laughs) it's overall performance because what is he going to be judged on, Premzi? Goals and assists. And and that's where I'll get to. I'll get to that point. But in terms of what he's doing in the approach play, in terms of taking on his man, how many times have we been frustrated at Martinelli recently because he's not even beating his fullback? That's been the case for a lot. Poro cooked. Um, yeah, against him in, in big situations in one yeah, but, we, we haven't, but bro, he's been about a year and a half. He's been dead for me. Yeah. I, I keep it one hundred. But, but the problem, the problem Same, that he's left. facing, and defensively, what he offers us, no one comes in and does what that is. And I know it seems like a, a, a thing, an excuse thing, but that's obviously we know how important that is to Arteta, guys, because that's why we've got the best defense in the league at the, at the very least. And that's not and, because of Martinelli. Come on now. Martin nah, I can't lie. He's got a point. We defend from the front. I do think yeah. he has a point. But at the same time, obviously, Sunday league football. Nah, when you start when talking about in that position, when Trussard starts, he defends it. He does the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said he can't go past the point. I do agree with T in the sense of the performances have improved. For me, it's that's where I'm with Premzi now. It's goals and assists because you're, and that's what I was gonna you're get not getting in, you're getting in the areas, sorry, and you're not showing evident improvement to the point where I'm thinking that goal scoring season you had, and you know me, I'm a big fan of him. Was that a purple patch? Like, was it one of them? Like, because we keep saying the Martinelli of the last two years, I'm getting scared. Like, I need him to do something in, in terms of being productive, and I don't know if he will. I love the guy, man. But DG, this is the thing with Martinelli. Is it a question of ability or confidence and me- the mentality in front of God. But I could argue I his confidence do... should be there. You're still playing. And you've been playing for two exactly. years ahead of... Bro, other he's man, fucking challenging for the league, yo. What more confidence yes. do you need? So, no, but <laughs> That's again, true. Yeah, you. this is... And yeah. this is where he needs to improve on that. In confidence in front of goal, his confidence in his play isn't a, isn't a problem. It's in that final action. Against Spurs, he rushed it. Against Atalanta, he rushed it. That's where that's where you see what I'm the saying the end like product, that. the end product is shout to Aaron Reed, man. You need to polish up at them things. Is, that's the end product. And that's we the end product. And what I saw yesterday to give him the and, and, and to what Hooks is saying, and what's what I saw yesterday, he stood that slow down, lift my head up, not fire the pass into Calafiori, weight it perfectly so he can strike it first time. Mm. That's an important he never thought he was never no, 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 gonna strike that. Never in a million he thought he was gonna strike that. But trust me, Premzi. No, I didn't know he was gonna strike that. You get it? No, no, no. But Premzi, but Premzi, he had the the reason Calafiori can strike that is because the pass has to be good enough. How many times have you seen Martinelli pass? Yeah, I get it, but it could just have been a weak pass. Because he was like, but Wendy, trust me, at the top level, yeah, they are not. Bro, you can't, I'm not, you can't, bro. Nah, one little man. pass outside the box like that, no, which is no, in a no. very open but, but zone. No, I ain't then, giving no you, credit for. So, but, but we've literally criticised Martinelli for not making that pass uh, or not making the right pass in terms of this, how you pass yeah, but the ball. What I'm saying is, to me, no, where no, Martinelli, no. one minute, where Martinelli passed Calafiori the ball was not a danger zone, bro. Yeah. He just done something well, out of the spectacular. The reason, what I'm saying the reason is, Calafiori when Martinelli's... It's because the pass is weighted. Yeah, that's bro, what, that's, that's what, Obviously, that's, no, that's no, anywhere. You're both right. right ball, I it's going to happen, innit? But what I'm saying is, bro, really and truly, yeah, Martinelli passed that ball to Calafiori with no intention of him whacking that ball and he just thought right my head I can't go that way pass it out nicely to him he'll do so in little did he know he's just going to run and wallop it in it he hasn't even been playing with this guy so we don't again, even really know what he's on do you again, know what I mean if, if he was just but then but we know again with the details it's not just a pass for passing sake it's a pass that has a message to it each and every time so let me say this let me no, because because no, nah, generally team does have a point about no, it. I know what you're saying. Team. Like you can make <laughs> you can make players do certain things with certain yeah. passes. I get what you mean. I understand. That's what I think you're that. Both right. We get it, bro. 
fully mm. gay, but I just don't think Martinelli's intention was, oh, I'm going to play this pass no. so perfectly for him to shoot. Because if that was the case, then yeah, I would fully get it. I, his but, intention for me was just to pass the ball, you get yeah, me? And luckily but, for him, it just came with the right... But right, Brunzi, <laughs> right, right, guy, you'll I don't disagree with you on that. I don't disagree with you. I don't... I'm not, I don't I'm, what I'm saying is, he, what he's passed, how he's passed him the ball in that situation, and I didn't want to deliberate on this point for so long, but he's allowed him to make a decision enough. first time, whether it's a pass, whether it's a cross... The, the way he's played that pass is what I've been wanting from Martinelli to do. I get I get angry and frustrated about when players, yeah, you might pick the pass out and make the right pass to the player, but if, if you're making that player have to make a touch, and that one touch can be the difference between having the opportunity to pass or cross or shoot first time to an, to getting closed down and putting your teammate under pressure. Like when I saw against Jorginho, Jorginho lost the ball against Spurs because he was giving it in a terrible situation and everyone's going mad at Jorginho, but he has no other option apart from kicking it out in that scenario. So Martinelli has yeah, improved mid, on that aspect. Midfielders, what midfielders need... are going to be receiving balls in all sorts of positions, but, otherwise like, he shouldn't be a midfielder. Like, you get me? No, no, that's but... just the truth, in it? Sometimes you defend, bro. If you play football, you know your defenders are yeah, under yeah. pressure sometimes. They've got to release you in it. And if, you, if you're mid Fielder, bro. If you're on your thing, yeah, 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 Tory style, you're out of there. Yeah, you yeah. get me? If you're not, yo, yo, go. You need to be on the bench next week, lad. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's and do you know who made that pass to Jorginho? Guy, it was Martinelli, and that's what I was criticizing him for because he's choosing. You've made well, the pass, that, but you're you know putting in a my, my point being is, so, I, I hear what you're saying, bro. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. I get it. He he put a, a pass on where he can shoot the ball. Like, I get it. But the, my problem is, is that's a pass backwards, and it. You get me? Anything forward. Yeah, bro, I'm not seeing nothing, bro. I'll be honest with you. His shooting is just every time wrong decision. Bro, he could have had probably a, a hat-trick of assist in a game, you get me, but he wants to shoot rather than pass the ball. Mm -hmm. he, when his head's down, like uh, my brother said over there, bro, he's like he's got a weight on his neck, you get me, bro? He can't, can't look up, see what's popping. It's just he overruns the ball a lot. How many times you see Martinelli overrun the ball and it goes out of play? How many times... See it again and not, again and again. Not in the last three games. The issue in the last three, the last two, not even the Man City one, but Spurs and Atlanta was that last decision. And that's what's missing, I think, from his game right now. Whether he gets that back, I don't know. But I've been encouraged with the last three performances in terms of overall. Again, I'm sure we'd love to do this again, DG, and we can have and we have more evidence to go off of. But with Martinelli. If he gets into that, he, he, I feel like the, the good old adage, he just needs a ball to smack him in the face and go in to get no, that weight off of his I shoulder. think he just needs to be dropped, yeah? Once he gets dropped for a little bit, yeah? That's when a player will look at himself and think, right, shit. What's going on with my there's no gar Yeah, there's no guarantee yet. No, but I mean for a proper long time. Like, don't get dropped. Trossard play as an okay game, then bring Martinelli back in. Drop him for three games, yeah? Or whatever the weather. In them... Them, them three games, you'll best believe he's going to be in his back garden, yeah, taking about 100 shots, yeah, thinking, yo, what is going on here? But then he gives him something to fight for. When he comes back on the pitch, he's got to prove something now if you want to keep this spot. There's a lot of players that are fucking comfortable in our team, bro, and it pisses me off. A lot of players are comfortable in our team. There's no competition in a lot of areas for players. Who would you say is comfortable? Well, for me, I would have said Odegaard was comfortable. Saka, comfortable. Havertz is comfortable. Who are you replacing Havertz with? You get me? And for me, bro, he does. he's the player that needs to be the least uncomfortable. You get me? So, I man, I'm being serious, bro. You got a lot of money coming for him. You get me? And he's done well since he's come in, but he's got to keep it going. We can't end up seeing a, a Chelsea. That's what I agree. Bro, you get me? Him, um, I'd yeah. say uh, Saliba, Gabriella would even say as well. I don't even think Calafiori or whoever will step into that position that are going to do as good of a job. And I don't expect him to. He's only just come to the club. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, bro, most of them, bro. And White Most of them, but now Timber Most with the option out there. Yeah, Declan Rice has been bro. thrown in the works now. But the players... Declan Rice, bro, you take Declan Rice out, the drop off from Declan Rice to Jorginho, there is a drop off, bro. No matter what you say, he's an aging player. Yeah, he could get you, he, he can hold the ball here and there, but there is no comparison to Declan Rice in it. You know what I mean? Thomas Party to me as well, he had a good game against City, but however, I was going to say that people weren't giving age, bro. You can see the age, though, bro. Like you can yeah, see he's physically age. declining a hundred percent. So, really, bro, trust me, man. There's, we 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 got we got to bring some players in. We definitely, obviously, we got to see what this Marino guy's like. I don't know, but obviously at Newcastle, uh, bro, nothing fantastic. I don't really watch much of him. Obviously, the, your brother here was saying, speaking like, do you watch a lot of him then?
Mikael Marino. Sorry, bro. I don't know. Yeah, no, not not him specifically, but just a lot of La Liga in general. Oh, Tell us about him, man. You was, I thought oh, you were saying that you put yeah, in the yeah, box, yeah. out the box. I was thinking, yo, bro, I thought you was an expert. Yo, Fabrizio <laughs> yeah. Romano. On this I thought, game. yeah, I thought Ez was about to drop us some serious knowledge on, on Marino, man. No, no, no. Just in general, right? Like, in terms of, like, it's because a lot of people are comparing him to Shaka, but in reality, their strengths are quite the opposite. Whereas Shaka can strike a ball from outside the box and bang a 30, 40 yard goal. That's not what you're going to find with Marino. It's going to be very hit and miss. He's got the ability to do it. Maybe it's just a confidence for him to keep doing it. And obviously, the way Sociedad play is very tippy-tappy and, you know, trying to play out the press and break through. So maybe the opportunities just don't present themselves. But when you come to, like, box presence, something that we wanted Kai Havertz to do, playing him in that left eight, what we're trying to get Declan Rice to do in that sort of number eight role is something that he excels in. Someone inside of the box, head the ball, get into that, create overloads. That's where he's going to excel. But the problem with him is he's a very tippy-tappy player. He's not someone that's going to bang a 40-yard pass and, you know, find spray. someone across the pitch. Yeah, he's well, I think we missed one of them, man. What I'm saying is, how do you know this if you haven't watched, if you don't watch him? <laughs> no, no, I do watch him, but I'm not, I'm not right. saying I watch Sociedad, like, all the time. Right. But I watch La Liga in general. Like, I watch a lot of La Liga games. It's not a specific Sociedad thing. It's more yeah, La Liga right. thing. Okay. I hear you say that, but, bro, you can't, like, if you say, for example, I watch all Premier League games, but say, I'll be honest, like, I'll, I won't watch every single one of Tottenham's games or every single one of Fingies. And some games, bro, man, having shit games and that, you can't make a full judgment of it. Do you know what I'm saying? So, really and truly, you got to see but what you can I'm do here. Like, so, say that specifically, I'd say last season, probably watched about 70% of their games. There's probably yeah. the odd one where... Yeah, so then you bloody games. watched him then, innit? That's basically <laughs> yeah. watching him. <laughs> Yeah, I get where no, friends no, no. is. I'm not saying like, I've <laughs> analyzed him specifically, but you know, just a general like, I'm not like sat there and gone, okay, I'm gonna see yeah, him, him, him under the mic. I don't know what you're talking about. Right, okay, <laughs> no, I'm just confused. I think he, you know, you, you, you watch, obviously, you're just giving us the information. I thought, right, you must definitely be um, watching the Liga and, and, and whatnot. And then obviously, no, no, you I'm didn't saying, watch like, it. I was like, like, going on here. Hey, I've got a question for you. Can do those minute to minute break that, no, no, not like that. Well, I don't but really like, know I'm nothing watching. about him. I've seen a couple of games of him here and there, bro. And from what yeah. I've seen, yeah, nothing special. Obviously, the World Cup, I mean, the Euros and that header, yeah, good, He's, good header. But I've just not that's seen. That's the right assumption, though. You're making the right assumption. The problem mm. with him is. He's never going to be that flashy player. He's not going to be yeah. like a Wurtz, for example. Right, he's just that guy. Like, he's a bit like, in that sense, yeah, I understand the comparison to Xhaka where, yeah, yeah, but I'm just, I just don't see anything. But then he pulls something out of the bag. That's kind of what you're going to see. Would you, would you have picked him over Zubamendi last year or, or before he signed for Arsenal? Different Honestly, profiles, but... though, isn't it? Different yeah, profiles, yeah, no, like, but Zubimendi's out of the two, because we were linked six. with Zubamendi. Like, mm. would you have picked him? We would him be linked to him at the time, bro. Yeah, we're linked like, with the I, I prefer Zubimendi because of what I want the team to be able to do. Yeah. And in terms mm. of like what I think the way, especially the way we're playing now in terms of this transition football where we want to sit back and defend, I feel like in a game like, for example, the Spurs game, he would have taken the sting out of the game. Um, against City, for example, we would have controlled that game more even with the 10 men. He's more That's of a Jorginho type because... kind of one for me. Super yeah, yeah, but I say Jorginho with a lot of legs. He, he, he looks like a big yeah, lump, yeah. doesn't he? He looks like a big lump. Like yeah, Moreno. Like that, that's why I'm yeah. cool with Moreno, man. My only well, issue you know is, do we have enough guy in midfield with him and Rice, especially Rice in the eight? No, nah, really? his ability to evade the press is very good. No, but the, yeah, the, but what, I want to see Fabregas, Santi again. kind of midfielder now, man. You saw, you know, Santi is my guy, yo, man. Santi this is what I want, bro. I don't think we have that. I love the industry and the fight and all of that, but. I personally think in some games we've missed a man that yo, can be I want, I want Daniel Dubois front, yo. That's who I want up front, yo. You're talking about... So AJ's you, even you know, you know more, man. just come in and he's, and he's giving AJ another straight... Bro, the amount of man giving know, AJ's AJ, straight... AJ, AJ, I'm, 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 I'm a Fiori, man, innit? I'm a Fiori, man. That's why, innit? I'll be honest with you, bro. Damn, AJ's got cool in this stream, bro. <laughs> nah, it's bad, bro. It's just yo, man got sazzled, bro. I don't give a shit what anyone says, bro. Obviously, Great dancing, man. You get me. And all I know, yeah, is that, bro, from minute one, yeah, to bro, minute knockout, it was a mad thing. You get me? Pink. It was a mad thing. And you gotta Pink. give, you gotta give Daniel Dubar his flowers, bro, because yo, he just went, yo, bro, he just went militant bro, mode. You see him, AJ's face like he's all. Oh. And you see, no, you, can't, you know what? He had heart, though, bro. He got up. He got up like a warrior, man. He got up. He got up. He is a warrior, by the way. I don't. I hope he bounces yeah. back. But you've had a couple of these. No, 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 no. He's acting now. That's it. Now done in now. 
See, <laughs> see, man, see, we're Marino. talking about boxing and fighters. I tell you what, this it's is what me, Marino, Link segueing it back to Marino. That's what Marino brings to us on the pitch. In terms of what I know from him, is he is a monster in terms of his jewels. Like when it comes to them 50 50 aerial jewels, that's what he wins the most. He's the best in, in Europe, that, that by the way, man. Then, in terms of playing the long ball, you know, when David Rye goes long to Havertz, when Marino's fit, that, that's what the option will be is to go to Marino. And what you were saying there, Souls, about the late runs into the box, that's what I've seen from the clips is him making those runs, scoring goals mostly with his head. You know, like the Premsey, the goal that we saw in the Euros, mm. that's his mm. bread and butter. That's what he does. So, and you know, Arsenal yeah, like all love him, then. You know exactly, and we know that's he's probably know. told him to buy him here. The tech, he's <laughs> exactly. to go we, grab we, him. What, what Saka very good at shifting onto his left, little, little whippers to the back post, and yo, mm. that's another way of scoring. That's what I, you know. What, bro, what I just gotta see what he does in the league in it because this is a different league, bro. In it, like of you can be all is. fucking fancy or whatever anywhere else, but bro, I've seen so many top players come here and it just hasn't worked out so. We gotta see how he works out. I've got faith that Arteta knows what he's doing. This is why I'm not killing anyone because, bro, there's a lot of players that he's brought in that I thought, now nah, what in the fucking world are you on, yeah? And then did they look all right and they're doing the job? So you think, okay, fair enough. He's building that trust with it. That's what he's doing with us. He's building that trust, but there's only a certain amount of trust that like the barrier's only there. You get me? Like after that, yo, we need to start seeing some results. And then, hey, you, you know oh. what? We could circle that question we asked earlier because Premzi wasn't here. What, what, what do you make of Edu? Because you just touched on transfers. Like it brings us back to what we was discussing just before you came in. Do you know what? I like the way that he he involves Arteta heavily in 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 the signings because that is what you need in order to have a successful team. I I believe anyway because the, everybody has to be on the same page. If my opinion is the manager's plan. The manager's ideas, his his tactics, his players, he should be bringing in the players himself. That's what I believe. I don't believe that, you know, the Edu and that should be giving him players, you know, put him into the team, put him into, into the team. Only for exceptions, you get me? Exceptions. Like if somebody's a real world beater and they're young and that, and he brings him forward and he's not too keen on him, then yeah, I'll, let, I'll make it Edu sign him himself. But you gotta give him some credit, bro. They, they've they've laid out some money in it, like, bro. We've been growing up seeing Arsenal spending, not spending nothing, bro. You get me forty mil and a pound. You get me, bro. Like mad thing. I'm telling you, that's what we've been seeing. So you gotta take your hat off to him. Like they managed to squeeze some money out the owners, and 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 they have brought in some signings. Don't get me wrong. This season, I think they've they've they fucked up badly. I think, I think we dropped the button a bit this this summer as well, man. It feels like a mixed bag. Like the additions look yeah. good, but. Yeah, yeah, blood. I'm with you with that. What? Well, where are we gonna see where our? Where are we gonna? Sorry, where are we gonna see the real making or breaking of Edu is when it comes to time to sack Arteta. If it does come to that time, you get me. Now, the only that's thing I rate from him is the, is the contract. If I'm honest, yeah. you've been on the ball with the Saliba new deals, Martinelli new deals, all of that stuff. We haven't had that kind yeah, of nonsense yeah. recently, but yeah. that's about it. Well, like, that, we have, that, we that's the only thing that moves there. me. Pardon? We have gone out there and got we have gone out there and got the likes of Jesus and Zinchenko and at the yeah, time no, we got Eddie for that. Really now. You know what I'm saying? So he, he has gone out there and actually managed to get us some players. And the thing that I would say is when we have missed our A target, the B target that we brought in, for example, with the Mudrick Trossard situation, it's coming and being good. So it's not like he, he he's not proactive, I don't think. However, I just don't think this season. They, they've been proactive enough. I don't know what's going on in the background financially. I don't know, just don't know what's going on, but I've not been happy with the window, you get me. And when man is getting sterling and that off loan, something must be going on. But we've profited. If man's profited, I, I just, I, I don't know, bro. I think it's with Eddie, he's, he's done all right so far. He's done all right so far. But I still, I still got to wait and see. I still got to wait and see, bro. And Tell me with a big trophy. In the last words that you said right. there, that's what I go with. Wait and see. Because if, if it's enough to win the league, we're not going to talk about the last transfer window. If it's, an, you know what I mean? And but then if, again, if, if, summer, if by the summer, you know, Musiala is available and we're the ones who get in him and we've, uh, say, put ourselves in a good position mm -hmm. and PSR is locked up even more. There's so many things that, again, that's why I try mm -hmm. and stay away from being critical of transfers. Because when we was criticising the club for, oh, you know, in, in recent, oh, why didn't we do more last season? season um, in terms of getting kudos in when we could have spent a little bit more and then you find out that PSR is a real thing 
and they decide to enforce it for for a, and a few clubs and you're like oh, okay maybe that makes sense and i was the one who was saying why didn't we get kudus and I, and again i still love him now you can still do it <laughs> he'd be a brilliant player to add in um so get me isaac yeah, in the man, summer everything's forgiven man summer get a trophy in the summer hey this conversation non-existent <laughs> And my last yeah, question gonna, like, we are right. gonna have to wait and see. Sorry, we are gonna have to wait and see in it because he has done some good bits, but at the same time, he's done some not so good bits in it. You get me? I think with him letting Arteta deal with the Abamyang situation and not getting involved too tough and supporting the manager, I think that was massive. I think he could have really easily said to Arteta, Yo, bro, this guy's a fan favorite here. He, he's bringing in money. Here, you get me? He's, yeah. Low it, you get me, sort it out, bring it back into the team, and it all could have changed the course of where we are now. I'm not saying it's just on a bummy angle one player, but I'm saying he has given the manager the support, even when I thought he should have been sacked and other play other people thought he should have been sacked. I'd probably say about 50%, 60% of the fan base, he stuck out with him. You know what I mean? He's seen something in him that we didn't see. So you gotta give him his props for that. But obviously, ultimately, it, it just depends on what we win in the end, and it 10 years if he's here, 15 years, and we don't win fuck all. No one's gonna remember no I do. You get me apart from apart from nah, I don't only remember him in the Arsenal team, and it won't be He was a set, and that's that's one thing with Eddie with the Invincibles, yeah, is why I get annoyed about him with depth. Because respectfully to Eddie, you was a side man, bro. You used to come off the mm -hmm. bench, so you understand why you need depth, why depth is required. <laughs> there was more games now than there was back then, really. So yeah. I don't get it, man. But this uh, this puts a good segue into my last question for you lot, because we've talked about Edu and Arteta throughout. How do you lot view the Cronkies then? Has the sentiment changed around them for you, man? I think it goes back to <laughs> what we the last point. Yeah, it's um, it's a, it's definitely going to be one that we can really seriously judge if we get success at the end of it. And I think what they have done so far is a good job in terms of investment. My, my, if Arsenal don't win a league or if they don't win any major trophy this season. I don't. I'm not looking at what the Cronkies have done. I'm looking more in terms of what we've not got finished on the pitch because it goes mentality at the club's changed completely. Even how they've operated in terms of investment, signing Declan Rice, hundred million, see, uh, Havertz, who everyone maligned, we're backing you. Yeah, you go make. I'm that slightly signing. overpaid for Kai. I'm sure they would disagree oh, with it, but at overpaid. the time he wasn't worth slightly. Slightly, bro. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice, blown out the water, yo. Definitely, definitely yeah. overpaid for Donny. And then man. five million and off what they originally bought Kai for. We got Zang. I just made it work now. They, do you know what? They've accepted losses as well. Only this summer they really said, uh uh. You, it's a big thing now with an athletic coming out and saying it is that the owners were the ones who said we need to make need some to make some peace now. finally because we've put in a lot of money in so far and we've not seen any returns but now it's time to do that and that's why there was in that we, we signed Calafiori, but we were kind of wanted to wait when, to when did it take full control was it 216 two 217 yeah around that kind of period yeah 17, and to be fair they have invested since then since that yeah. point if I'm honest, mm -hmm. might not be. And you know what? Team, I think yeah. I think with um with Josh Kroenke coming and actually being a lot more involved in the club and coming down, I think he's he's developed a liking for the club. And you know, with these rich folk, yeah, let me tell you, all of this is just a playground to them. You get me? This is a playground, 100%. a big a rich man's playground. And with him it's winning with the LA, with him winning with the LA Rams and all that, that would have give him a little bit of a more of a hype and a taste of winning. And thought, you know what? Yeah, this is this is not a bad life, innit? This yo, we need to start winning with the with Arsenal. And because they've invested their time a bit more, they've got a bit more of a an understanding. You got to give them their credit. They have invested. You get me? And really and truly, is down to Edu and Arteta with the money that we've spent. What seven, eight hundred, nine hundred million, bro? That's, that's spent peace, man. That we can't we can't be around it. We spent peace. And I understand that, obviously, we had to kind of spend a lot of money because there was so much shit in the team. We had to rectify that and then start adding, which is the process that we're still in now. But, bro, I don't know. And yeah, I think the, the fan base is mad in it. If we don't start seeing a striker coming in in the next year or two, bro, I'm telling you, yo, there's going to be some sort of fucking protest. <laughs> I want Isaac, man. I'm not going to give up on the Isaac thing or Jokerez or one of them, man. Yeah. Do you know what? For me, with the Cronkies... I still think there should be question marks because we haven't won a league. And I just believe if this was a company, it doesn't matter how talented or not talented the managers mm. that work for your company. It's the owners who set in it. If the owner's going to be a joke, then 
indirectly everyone's going to be a joke i do i've come to accept when you read about them and you see that they put people in place and they leave them to their own devices cool if that's what we're doing and if i'm honest i think any successes or failures indirectly have been part of them but it's been edu and on edu and Mikel Arteta. like you have had bread to spend and whether it's worked or not you're gonna have to hold that for what we've won well, or the not it is deluded these man, this isn't like a workspace, you get me? These man, yeah, are fucking at the top. And all these other guys are big ballers as well, spreading bread as well, you know what I mean? So true. That's, why, that's why I say we don't have no God-given right to win fuck all. we got to go on the pitch and prove that we've got something to, to, to go and win, you get that's me? That's what I'm and saying. I'm what... taking a job with what you're saying, so make it happen yeah. for me. Regardless, yeah, but this is what I'm saying. Like with him, he can only do a certain amount, bro. He's invested into the squad, in it. Yeah, maybe a striker or whatnot, but financially, we might have put too much money in the club where we couldn't. I'm not an accountant, I don't really like to look at it financially, but we haven't got a striker in it. That's ultimately where it can hit us. But we did put a bid in for Benjamin Sasko, so the money was there to, to put in for him at they the do start. Sign, the, yeah, the, the transfer. So there we go. So these guys are offering the money in it. So this is why, at the moment, I'm chilled with the Cronkies. I'm actually chilled with them. I'm chilled with them. Mm. Even off the pitch, sorry. Sorry, I just want to say quickly, even off the pitch in terms of what they're trying to do in terms of the club and the community and and really seeming to invest in that. Um, there's obviously, I've been, I've been, I've not been to many games um, in the past, what, two years. So, Premzi, you'll be more versed on this, especially the whole but. It seems like they've really tried a little bit more with the fans. I know the ballot system, and we can talk mm -hmm. about that. But I, again, I don't really look it's at the Broncos. I look at the, the, the what was, uh, I forgot the lady's name, who is the head of that um, in terms of the, uh, the match day operations in that system. But yeah, I think they really have tried to connect the community and connect fans, not just within North London, but within the world, around the world. Really As they should. Accepting us in LA and then seeing Philly. And yeah, they're, big they're just re the rectifying the fuck up that they made though, bro, because you got to deep it, yeah? Look, even with the YouTube side of things, a lot of these clubs have their TVs and all that. Arsenal never really used to post anything, really. Very rarely little clips here and there. Do you know what I mean? You don't really see much content from Arsenal on their direct channel, in it. Really and truly, they should be thinking about that, having proper media in there, pushing it out, getting it to all around the world to keep making the brand bigger. But really, we don't see that much getting getting pushed around. So I don't I know, maybe now, that was More now? A little, you know, yeah, now we're seeing bits. Right? Now we're seeing more stuff coming in and out. But still, bro, like, they should be having some... Like, do you know what I mean? they got Frimmy there. They should be having making... Some of them shows are pretty entertaining, isn't it? Make them a regular yeah. thing or... You know what I'm saying? Or a little 10, 15 minutes in your training or breakfast, come and do some natural stuff, footage or where not an all or nothing kind of thing, but just little clips and bits and bobs so the fans can just go on there and it could just... you know Arsenal the fans, they'll lap that stuff up as well, man, like, especially mm. social media ones. Mm. So, yeah, man. Sorry, Souls, I cut you off, yeah. bro. Oh, yeah, go on. Uh, yes, man. I was just going to say, like, for me, the Cronkies weren't ever the problem. The problem was that we had two billionaires who wanted to take the club in a different direction. And that's part of the problem that we had, is that they, someone it. needed to assume control of the club because neither one wanted each other to profit. If the Cronkies went in about £100 million, Osmanov's profiting because the shares are now going to be worth more. He's going to benefit and they didn't like each other. That's part of the problem that we've had for a very, very long time. Now, when it comes to the Cronkies, look, every franchise is winning bar Arsenal. Do you think? Do you think like in that friendship group right now that Arsenal's not being spoken about? Like you know, you know what the American and the Arab relationships are like. You know they want to get one over the like you know the um, Etihad owners and like you know getting one over a city because of you know being part of the Etihad and being Arab owners. You know if Newcastle ever come into the picture, they're gonna want to get one over because that's just how the Americans are. Like especially with the Middle East, so. There's, there's a lot of True. personal pride wanting Arsenal to do well. And money, like, look, the owners have put people in place, and this is what we've asked. We want footballing people to run the club. You know, we can look at United as an example where the owners are too involved, where they've got bankers running the club. They've got, you know, their Chelsea mates even. In. Yeah, yeah, Chelsea have done the similar thing where their mates are coming in to be directors of football and blah, 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 and running the club. You know, it's, it's, it's a problem, isn't it? Because we're seeing it where they're not making the correct decisions. Now, yeah, he's kind of got Edu. Whatever our opinions are on Edu, Richard Garlick, you know, who had a success at you know, other clubs. He's got Vina, who's been in the footballing world at Barcelona, etc. You know, all right, he, they made some mistakes with Ben Misslin, Tapa, Rouse, and then he coming in. But they rectified that. Even the way they dealt with that, they dealt with that in a way where there was no legal repercussions on Arsenal. Because if they had handled that badly, there could have been a lot of law lawsuits against us because of the dealings that we did. 
So, and then the backing of Arteta, they've made money available even this summer. You know, there's a lot of reports coming out that. But you Arsenal can also say they didn't do their due diligence properly when they brought these guys in as well. But you know what it is though, like mm-hmm. it's difficult though, isn't it? Because the world of football is just very grey. There's not. It's hard because we know that there's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of bad eggs in the footballing world. But sometimes, like you take a chance. Sven Mislintap was one of the highest rated, you know, scouts when he came to us at British Dortmund. The amount of players that he was, he was, he was, he was diamond. Yeah, he was. And they were calling. He was. Yeah, yeah. So oh. it just it, it's like I feel like they have, but when they've made a mistake, they've acted quick. You know, Unai Emery, for example. Okay, yeah, they may have, they have him going to a him season that. where they shouldn't have, but they said, you know what? Okay, cool. You got us close. You got to to Europa League final. Let's just give you a bit more time and let's see how you do. They sacked him and said, you know what? We go back to planning. We want. I think that's because there was season. literally not bums on seats as well. I'll be honest. I agree with you, but if you remember around the Europa League, I can't remember. Mm. Was it Frankfurt or something at home? There was hardly any yeah. bums on seats. But, but this so regardless of how they got there, fair enough. But yeah. No, no. But even then, like we've. Even when we've had those opportunities, we still haven't been able to take them. We've not True. done well in Europe for a very long time. Like inconsistencies. So, you know, maybe that's why they gave it to him. But money since then, like since Arteta's come in, we've been spending about 200 million a summer. You know, mm-hmm. that's unprecedented for us. Even this summer, we had 250 million pounds available to us. It's up to Edu and Arteta if they deem it. Like the Mudrick signing, for example, that I think Stan actually made a personal phone call and said, right, what's happening here? What do we need to do? They said we need a bit more money because this is what Chelsea have been in. They say match it. They say if that's what you need, go do what you need to do. Edu and Arteta turned around and said we don't think the deal's worth it. So the Cronkies have got no problem pouring money into this club you know, to make it. it you know what? It, it sounds that from that bit there, it sounds good if that actually happened because it just shows that the Cronkies will put the money in because they know that these money are just trying to waste their peas in it. You know what and I mean? They if they're happen, saying to him, look, yeah, yeah. Uh, you need an extra 20 mil and they say, no, nah, we don't think he's worth it. You get me? You're going to think, right, all right. This, they're not just going to try to piss up the money up the wall, innit? So the relationship seems good between them all, it, And that's how we need it. If we want our club to also, succeed. You know that summer where we've got like Ramsdale, White um, and, and, and the others as well. Like for mm. a good month, we didn't, we, we weren't moving. We had a lot of links and we had a lot of like, you know, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. What happened? Josh flew flew from America, came in, and within a week we have three signings done. So like we're seeing signs of like when the owners want to be proactive and actually kick them up the ass that they are. Like Eddie's been kicked up the ass by Josh and Stan. Like, you know, Arteta's the same thing. You know, these guys are present. I agree, because I think Edu's happening. been told you need to sell some players. Like we need we've been spending peas yeah. this summer. You need to do all right I, in the I transfer think, market. I think, I think the way that you see, people are saying it is wrong. I think what's happening is if you're not going to use them, let's stop wasting money. I think that's probably the exercise that they're going with. If you're not going to play ESR, send him because what's going to happen next summer? If you don't play him this entire season, that's two seasons of no football. He ain't going to be worth jack shit. No matter how much we rate the guy, people are only going to come in and go, yeah, 10 million, 15 million because the guy's not played for two seasons. You know, if we're not going to use Eddie and Ketia, yeah, right now the hype is behind him. Like I'm not saying look. No, nah, we got a good fee for Eddie. Eddie. We got a good fee for Eddie. I mm. won't complain. I got a good fee, especially because yeah, the whole right now, what was it, Marseille? That didn't Eddie bang as T season. said. Yeah. Now, do you know what we've like, done all right with the sales in it? But it's just we've left ourselves short, in my opinion, on squad depth it. because that's the problem. Like, look at ESR now; he's out there banging goals and looking the part. Odegaard's injured is just so ironic how it how it, how it kind of all falls into place yeah. in it. But this is where the manager makes his money now. What he's the second highest paid manager. In the league, you get me, you got earn your bees now. You get me, this is where you earn your money, exactly. Oh, and you fresh as well. Do you know when we go back to Arteta? Arteta was the one that wasn't playing ESR when he had him in the first place, um, last season. He saved him in it against, but he saved him against against Chelsea. Do you remember? He came in, no, no, in the oh, team, man. The last season. Mm. Then, when, when there was, was the times where we could have caught, we was calling for ESR to come in, get mm. some starts, and that he, he didn't he didn't trust him. And he, he had to leave, didn't he? And if he, if he, you know, he's doing well at Fulham, but he probably wouldn't have played that many minutes if uh, Erdegaard's injury, which mm. again, he, it's he funny how the domino but he wouldn't have play, been, been playing. So yeah, it's what that's why it's on the manager for me. Whether we win a trophy, uh, not not on the manager, but the mentality that has been in this group because we've got the quality now. We can't complain. We've lost players. So City lost players. You know what I mean? Rodri, bit out for the season they're talking about now. 
This is what this is what we all oh, is that said. serious though, or is that just David, oh. David, 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 David Wilson said it? David Wilson said it. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say, what, what did he say he, before he, I get he's off? He's out for the whole season still. He, um, he's out with a serious knee injury, yeah. and he's going to be out for a significant part of the season. There's no time, there's no duration on the injury. Well, yet, that's, but they know it's that, serious. that's definitely going to have an effect on them because without Rodri last season, they did that's where they kind of dropped points here and there. But obviously, bringing Gundo on back was a massive move for them, so smart. But without Rodri, oh, I don't that's think like... we can continue that without Rodri. No, 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 no. Rodri's Rodri's something else. But yo, boys, I'm gonna have to shoot. I just want to say thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having... On that as well, to... Pete, man. That's this is a good way to to to, to lock it off, man. Before you go, though, everybody plug, no, stuff, yeah. <laughs> everyone plug their stuff, man. Everyone plug their stuff, man. I can't let you lot go without promoting you lot's things, man. So yeah, Pete. someone take the floor, do that, and we're out. I appreciate it, DG. Thanks for the invite. It's been a while since yeah. we've done this. And and Premzy, uh, we did do one show a long time, but you, you, you're busy, man, bro. You do plenty of shows. So you... <laughs> no, bro, I'm busy, man. man. Daddy life, yo, bro. I'm busy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Around, well, friend. Hey, and, <laughs> and I can't lie, Premzy, I think you might have been yapped that time that we, we did do it the one time. So, <laughs> bro, okay, man, I... can you not see, man? Yeah, man. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but big up yourself, my brothers. Uh, big up to yourself, souls. It's a pleasure as always, oh, well. man. man. You can find me at Tariq Talks, man, then. Um, Tariq Talks, YouTube. Um, YouTube, yeah, Twitter, you name it, Tariq. And it's, I'm not like James St. Patrick's son. Um, so, yeah, I think, Prems, you said something about that there as well, that time. <laughs> Did that? All right, say no more. That sounds like me. That sounds like me. <laughs> hey, Prems, where can they find you, man? Yo, first of all, Deluded, thank you very much for having me. It's, it's, it's Normal, my guy. Drop it up with you, man, and there. Uh, Premzy underscore AFC on Instagram and Premzy TV on YouTube. I don't really do all this Twitter bullshit and all that. I'll be honest with you, bro. I just try to keep it as real as I possibly can, innit? So I'm not involved in that. Yeah, YouTube and Insta, man. Just hit me up anytime. We active with the yeah. Come on, S. Yeah, no, it's, it's an absolute pleasure, firstly. Make sure you guys have subscribed to Deluded, one of the Appreciate hardest that, working man. YouTubers, 100% hands down. Appreciate that, Pro- my guy, man. And also, Premzy, you know what? I'm actually surprised. I've watched a lot of your content, yeah. You've become balanced. You're moving to the side, you know. Slowly, we'll get you. We'll get you here. No, nah, I'm just, but... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I've just got common sense, fam. And just say it as it is, isn't it, bro? If you shit, you shit. If you're good, you're good. If one week you <laughs> shit and one I'm week you're good, it. yeah, you're gonna have to say it as it is, isn't it, bro? <laughs> No, but, nah, yeah, I'm, loving, job, I'm loving bro. the community at the moment, man. Yeah, but you can find me on Twitter mainly at Gunasauce, and then from there, whatever channel someone I'm retweeting like anything that's out there. So, uh, but yeah, make sure you do subscribe to DG. It's always a pleasure coming on. Balanced thoughts. Appreciate Sometimes that. Sometimes a bit wild with some of your baller takes, but hey, you know, we'll hold that against you. But yeah. <laughs> Anyways, man, on that, I'll take that, man. Obviously, lads, it's a pleasure. You know, not just them. Hooks was here earlier. He had to shoot off. I only bring people that I can talk Arsenal whether and they have balanced opinions, whether they make sense or it to me or not. I like people who can convey themselves, and that's why I have all the time in the world for you, man. People, I'm sure you lot agree and disagree with a lot of what we said. So, yeah, smash the like button, subscribe, follow the man them on the socials. All their stuff is going to be in the descriptions on the video if you didn't catch what they said. But let me let the man them go and enjoy their evening and whatever they're doing you man peace yeah smash the like button subscribe peace